Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be. That's how His kingdom comes when His will is being done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will. One more time. Thy will be done in our lives, O God. Thy will be done. 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 The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of good. And not of evil to bring you a hope and an expected end. Lord, our hearts are open tonight. This is not an ordinary service. This is one of, it's not one of those services. We submit to your word and we ask that it will challenge and change us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good evening again. Please hug one another. Greet one another before you sit. hallelujah it's good to be back home we apologize we're just returning from a trip we thank god for what he's doing amazing um we just came back from adamawa state it's a lovely place hallelujah brothers if god is taking you that direction we come with a prophetic word it's a safe zone hallelujah God has been faithful oh, brothers and sisters how many of us can testify God has been faithful you know sometimes we take for granted the things that he does in our midst his faithfulness sometimes we take for granted the breath the life the energy the grace and um, I think that it is important that every once in a while we just take out that time to thank him. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I have learned and I have mastered the art of thanksgiving. My entire life revolves around thanksgiving. Never will I utter a word against his faithfulness. That we are alive. While we were coming, I think I was just talking to one of my people and there was a ghastly motor accident that just happened probably minutes and seconds and I know that car some assaulted most likely killed everybody there praise the Lord and um, sometimes we take for granted that we are alive and healthy but I have learned to give him praise my soul will always praise him for his faithfulness every time I come in for koinonia once I just step down from the car and I look at God's people hungry and ready to receive my heart is gladdened but I still give him thanks because it's not as easy as this for everyone hallelujah that's why I raised that song you are good and your mercy endures forever it is very important this probably is already a prophetic word for someone never ask God for anything when you have not given him thanks for what he has given you before you must have that attitude of gratitude gratitude is the secret for more anything you don't thank God for you will never see more of it in your life anointing influence power revelation grace whatever it is hallelujah learn to give God thanks thanksgiving has to do with nothing uh, around your circumstance many of us say I want to make sure that things are happening my no 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 the Bible says in everything, give thanks. Praise the Lord. 
listen you cheat you cheat satan in a remarkable way when your heart is stayed on thanksgiving are we together now there are people who didn't get admission probably I'm sure i've gotten only god knows how many text messages there are people who trusting god for jobs marriages other people celebrating testimonies of what god has done as far as thanksgiving is concerned it makes no difference you must cultivate the culture and the attitude of thanksgiving and you will see god move beyond your prayer point you will see god move beyond your prayer request brothers and sisters and he will do things in your life that will surprise you this is the god that i serve this is the god that i know when you thank him for his finger we say you will see his hand and when you thank him for his hand, he will reveal his entire self. Hallelujah. Can we take out one minute to thank God? Is that too much? Lift your voice in one minute. Just count your blessings. Don't complain. Don't say, God, if you only give me a better job. All those things are, are deceptions from the pit of hell to rob you and cheat you. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. I was talking to a lady who has been on admission in the hospital for the past i think two and a half years and all you will hear from that lady's mouth is melody she's not thinking of marriage she had a very good job before she became sick a terminal disease leukemia it's almost a death sentence yet this lady is always praising the lord and there are people who are complaining about job complaining about husband complaining about no money storming the gate of heaven with a lot of noise that reveal immaturity lift your voice and say i am grateful i can never repay you but from my heart i like to say that i thank you i will never repay you but from my heart I'm saying, Lord, that I thank you. Thank him for everything he has done. Lord, for your faithfulness. There are many things you are yet to do, but I thank you for the ones that I have seen. I'm alive. You spoke to me that you will keep me throughout this year. And I thank you. I've not spent money on drugs. Thank you because the desires of my enemies have not come upon me. Lift your voice and thank him. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say. Have you forgotten that he alone is a shield for you? The Bible calls him your glory and the lifter up of your head. Please thank him. This is not our teaching tonight, but I feel that I need to keep putting in us that attitude of thanksgiving. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Go ahead and thank you for your family members, for faithfulness. A gentleman has been sending text messages to my phone, I think for the past three days. His eyes are going blind, completely blind from glaucoma. Another family is trusting the Lord for over 2.5 million to, to fly their father to India for a surgery that will destroy him listen don't take for granted what god is doing you are complaining but it's because your mouth can talk you are grumbling only because your legs can walk forget about all that you think god has not done and tell him thank you thank you you're complaining of admission but it's because you can read and write lord jesus we are deeply grateful deeply grateful deeply deeply grateful we acknowledge you you are faithful thank god for koinonia thank god for what he's doing lord we thank you amazing things by the spirit you need to only travel out of this region to see what the teachings are doing in the lives of people we give you thanks we are not ungrateful people we choose to see what you are doing it's a choice we choose to see what you are doing and we thank you. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Cultivate this attitude. And you will cheat Satan. You will cheat impatience. You will cheat failure. Once, once you come to a point where you are a great person, the devil cannot do anything with you again. Because you thank him. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. To sing his praise in the morning. Hallelujah. We live in a very ungrateful generation. Very ungrateful. We always want more. Lord, you've given me five children. How about adding two more? Lord, my salary is 300,000. Can't you make it 500,000? Right? Lord, you delivered me from accident, but when will another car come? Very ungrateful. There's this lust for more. But those who reign in life are those who can say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Learn this. And this is a key that will open you up to unprecedented realms. Things you never prayed for will follow you like a charm because you are grateful. Hallelujah. Pay attention to what I'll be teaching tonight because I believe the Lord will bless us very, um, very powerfully. The teachings that come here attempt to challenge our mindsets and build us. In recent time, I've been studying um, I have studied this but I've been paying detailed attention to the exact spiritual requirements that make a man usable. You notice that the teachings that have come in the last maybe three or four weeks have been centered around preparing us to be able to host the glory of God. This is the pursuit of people. People wonder why certain people are mightily favored, right? certain ministries are used by God and I have been editing my philosophies and my understanding about why God will seem to deposit heavy dimensions of his glory and his anointing and I have been amazed at the things that I've been discovering when you get the teaching the man God uses there I teach on a factor that I've learned I used to think the secret of spiritual power is just Bible studies and prayer and fasting and while that is important in recent time as I have grown and as I have come into deeper intimacy with the Holy Spirit I found one factor that overrides them all I told you motif right let me do a quick recap on, on it and then we'll build up from there that the number one reason why many people do a lot of spiritual activities please pay attention this has nothing to do with ministry the number one reason why people keep doing a lot of spiritual things with little result is that fundamentally our motives are corrupted. Our motives are wrong. Many men of God want power because they want to prove to people that they are not failures. I've told you it's not enough reason for God to give you the anointing. Again, let me use an illustration that I gave, an example. Remember, um, what's her name? Anna and Penina, right? The Bible tells us that Penina had children and Anna was barren. Anna kept praying and praying because she was trying to stop the mockery of Penina. And God said, it's not enough reason for me to give you a child. Until she changed her motive. And her motive became to return that son back as a prophet unto God. She prayed just once and a baby came. Your motive overrides your fasting. Please hear me. Your motive overrides night vigil. Your motive overrides moving from prayer house to prayer house. Your motive overrides sowing a seed. You can tap into anything you want to tap into. God will scan your motive until he finds himself there. Otherwise, you will never taste of his glory. How many preachers want fame? How many preachers want power? They, they just want a situation where they are considered to be a success as good as that is it's not enough reason for you to host the glory of God so our motives hallelujah there are so many ladies who want to get married to prove to people that um, I am not like the rest 
You'll never get a husband that way. You can choose one for yourself, but not the one God will give. There are many people who want to do a lot of things. People labor to try to buy a car. You ask them why. They say, somebody dared me and I did betting with the person. You will never buy that car. Believe me, except not God's way. You are ready to frustrate yourself. People want to build houses, you know. And please, I, I want us to be very careful because our society is built upon creating an unhealthy pressure upon people to prove points. Are we together? Prove points. And if you don't deliver yourself from that mess, you will rob yourself of the glorious destiny that you have in Christ. Your motive. I always examine my motive since the lord taught me this i always examine my motive to make sure that the things that i do are from a genuine motivation to see his glory come i sat down at the airport this afternoon and i was just or this morning and i was just thinking what is this all about we've been up and doing for weeks and from Lagos down to Abuja down to Adamawa and then back tomorrow we are on another trip again you know and it continues like that and I sat down and, and I started asking myself what is all this about is it just a young man trying to build a ministry or is it are you trying to pursue a vocation called preaching or are you trying to advance your name sometimes you need to draw away from the crowd and sit alone how many of us still practice that if you don't you are already dying let me assure you if you are so busy that you cannot take out time white people used to do this this is what i love about white people nigerians keep making the same mistake for decades because we never take out time to think a white man will have a, a vacation away and just go and sit down under a tree in a forest and start asking themselves no matter how stupid the questions are at least they are all to themselves i want us to begin to practice this art of retreat not just locking yourself in the room and praying and sweating there sometimes you just need to walk alone go to the dam and sit down and say where am i going what is all this about i ask myself this all the time especially when we go for meetings and god does great and mighty things and you see the way people are responding oh this is the joshua sermon when i go back i just think and what is this all about because i plan to be doing this for the rest of my life and i'm going to live for a very long time so what is this all about just preaching just being one man of god or just so somebody will write a book about great men that god has used and then put my name motive you must take out time in your life to sit down at that point the spirit of god can minister to you he can tell you take note you have started derailing from the pure passion to see god and you've started looking for a name for yourself be careful at that point you readjust that's what we call repentance are we together or i see that you love me but You've started having a desire for something else. And then you come back. Most times we are so busy. So busy. We don't take out time to examine our motive. Hallelujah. Your motive is like, is like a metal. It can wear and tear. And occasionally you need to go back to that threshing floor. Where you re-examine everything. If your motive for ministry for instance is money the day you have the money because you will have it all in abundance more than you can think of you will never have any passion for god again if your motive is fame what happens when your name is everywhere right if your motive is to have crowds what happens when there are so many people if your motive is to be a celebrity what happens when the spotlight is on you some of us the way you are looking at me like this behind the physical innocence you claim to portray is a very corrupt motive and by corrupt i don't mean immoral necessarily i mean that it's not in sync with 
that pure desire to see his kingdom come. I see the way pastors lobby for power. As if it's a, it's a recharge card they are trying to buy or as if it's another phone they want to change. You will think all that passion is because they love the sheep. You will think that passion is because they want, I mean, you see people dry. They come out and they are like a skeleton. They can't even talk. What are you doing? Fasting. Say for what? Say, I'm tired of my, my status quo. And you will imagine and say, oh God, help this guy. He will kill himself. And God says, leave him there. Just leave him there. And you finish your 10 days dry. And then nothing happens. Then they get frustrated. And in their, frustrating, they, their frustration, they look at everyone that God is using. And say, this person, you, you can't be genuine. Because I did what is supposed to be the requirement. And I did not get it. Motive. Motive. We do night vigils and we pray. We run around our palace, our bedrooms. We lock ourselves. We sit on toilet seats for hours, yelling at the gates of heaven. Oh God, give me power or I die. We are trying to be like John Knox. But we don't have his passion. And you shout there and be angry and heaven does not even respond. Motive. Yet there are people who just lift up their voices and cry. One word from heaven and it's like, it's like God owes them a debt he must pay. The moment they call on him, he's obliged to respond. I tell you, the key is your motive. Everybody say, search my heart, oh God. Say it from the depth of your heart, search my heart. Say, try my thoughts. And deliver me from any wicked way. Say it again. Search my heart, O God. Try my thoughts, O God. And deliver me from any wicked way. One mother called me complaining seriously about her daughter. And um, is someone I know. And she said, Apostle, wouldn't you tell your daughter to, I mean, no marriage, no job. What, what kind of lady is this? I'm, I'm tired of what people are telling me. I said, Mama, I love you very much, but let me tell you the truth. As good as that is, it's not enough reason for God to give her a husband. Because children are not doll babies. They are real human beings with destinies. And there must be a very serious reason as to why God will bring a man and a woman and commit a destiny for them to raise for decades. It cannot just be to avert the shame that comes with somebody getting old and not getting married. As sincere as that is, our motives must be checked. Are we together? This is so powerful. It's one of the biggest secrets of this ministry and the hand of God. Motive. Very sincere desire to see his glory come. Nothing more and nothing less. Hallelujah. So your motive. That was what I talked about. Tonight, I want to talk very briefly and then we'll pray on the subject of love. I call it the mystery of perfection. The mystery of perfection. I want to talk about love. A very powerful secret again that brings the presence and the glory of God upon the life of a man and an individual. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything that's my confession to you. I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell you that I love you more than anything 
I asked the Lord recently, listen, I asked the Lord recently a very serious question. I said, Lord, is it really true that you want to use everybody? Can everybody really be used by God? Or is it that according to his predetermined counsel, there are just a few people? Because it looks like in every territory, there are many people who are not serious with God, then a few who are taking God seriously, then one or two or three people who are mightily used by God. And I asked the Lord recently, I said, Lord, what is, what is really the key? Why, why is it that it looks like you are mising your presence? Why is it that it looks like you are mising your power? What exactly is the key? And the Lord told me something. He said, my people do not have the love of God in their hearts. This thing is a very serious issue. What I will teach you about love are direct words. Some of them I will be writing them the way that I heard the Lord speak to me. He called it the mystery of perfection. The reason why people do not rise into the realm of spiritual perfection is because fundamentally, they lack love. This thing called love. Our generation gives love a feminine character. Every time we think love, we are thinking this is a feminist word. You know, it's for ladies. It has to do with affection. I'm not talking about affection at all. The subject of love has been the hindrance to the healing power of God. Has been the hindrance to financial prosperity coming upon individuals and ministry. The subject of love has been the reason why God will never give certain people kingdom influence. That mantle of honor that people desperately crave for. Listen carefully. It's a mystery of perfection. Very, very important. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus began to teach in what we call the Beatitudes. And he was teaching on the subject of love. The Lord is really going to challenge us tonight. And we'll see how far we have derailed from the precepts of God. And we'll see how justified God is. In our not experiencing the fullness of his presence. Let's read from verse 43. We'll be very fast. Are we there? Verse 43. It says, Ye have heard that it has been said. That means somebody said it. Somebody taught it. Somebody began to advocate it. Oh, it's projected. It says, Ye have heard that it has been said. What has been said? Thou shalt love your neighbor and do what to your enemy? Hate your enemy. Right? Listen to Jesus' own philosophy. Verse 44 he said but i say unto you love your enemies and bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you these are very serious instructions coming from the lips of god he says and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you 45 he says that he may be what children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh the sun. Oh, look at this. Look at this. He's, he's giving us a character of God. He makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Look up. There is a poisonous philosophy that is eating the body of Christ. Fabricated by preachers fabricated by denominations fabricated by individuals that is short-circuiting the new levels of glory from coming to our lives and it's the simple subject of love from god's perspective look at what god says should be a christian's response right but we have been trained we have designed ourselves around certain very dangerous philosophies we live in a, a generation that is upset we, we are obsessed with causes and judgment are we together especially for preachers 
we are always under pressure to prove to people we are anointed and the moment anybody does anything we are thinking i will curse you or this and that will happen to you i will prove to you that if i'm a man of god you will not wake up tomorrow you know we live in that kind of thing and while there is a place and a provision for the justice of god and judgment we are gradually derailing from the principles of the spirit as far as love is concerned we are preoccupied uh, with the, the pressure to try to demonstrate the validity of our anointing and in so doing we are rubbing ourselves out of that which God wants for us love the mystery of perfection the secret that brings people into that, that level of grace watch the way preachers fight one another in the body of Christ and you wonder you see let me tell you something the fact that you are doing something wrong and still seeing the glory of God does not mean God justifies what you are doing are we together I can for instance be sleeping around and yet see the anointing of the spirit upon my life it, it does not mean God is endorsing this it is part of the sovereignty and the mercy of God so sometimes we get into the illusion that the fact that the presence of God is still present in our lives is a justification that every other thing is all right. That philosophy is an ideology that is built as a result of the absence of the secret place for a long time. Is God speaking to us? There are all kinds of things in the body of Christ that are destroying people and and the, the problem there is believers fellow believers are the worst hit in all of this we have churches that attack one another some even very openly are we together now we have men of god that attack one another i think the the latest one in the body of christ that is so ugly is the fight between the grace and law right that has even become a war. It's like they have drawn a line. If you're for grace, this side. If you're for law, this side. No. How many ministers have fight men like W.F. Kumui? Right? Because probably deeper life people don't wear earrings. They don't wear this. There are people who have hated that man of God and resented him. How many people have fought men like Pastor Chris? How many people have fought different people with philosophies? Listen to me. Let me tell you the reason why we will never see the power of God that we desire. Enshrined in our hearts is this ideology of hatred and bitterness. We fight people around our lives. Let me give you a few points. Let me not run. Um, the Lord began to tell me three things that has demonstrated that we do not really have the love of God. Number one, this is what the Lord revealed to me. The first sign God gave me that the body of Christ is not working in love is that we focus on actions above intentions we focus on actions above intentions this is a dangerous ideology where you judge men based on actions and not just intentions the bible tells us this it says man looks at the outward appearance in other words the physical manifestation but God discerns the motive behind our activities. Are we together? So for instance, for instance, I can be a rapper. Let me just give you an instance. I can be a rapper, a Christian rapper. Are we together now? And um, simply because I can come up and I'm just rapping. You can write me off and just look at me and think because I'm rapping I look like somebody who sleeps around. I look like somebody who is not serious with God. And use the actions rather than the intentions. Is the number one mistake that we are making in the body of Christ. That the Lord revealed to me that is a revelation. That the love of God is truly not grounded in our hearts. We focus on actions. While actions are very important. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. But many times if you really 
really want to discern things by the spirit you must sustain a technology in the spirit to discern intentions beyond actions are we together now a preacher may be preaching for instance and maybe communication barrier or something like that he may make a statement like um God's primary assignment is to kill you. Something like that. And all of a sudden a newspaper says, God's primary assignment is to kill you. Caption. Heresy preached by A and B and C. And because we live in a generation that is gullible to hear bad things, we always want to check. Ah, ah, God's assignment is to kill you. Nobody goes to listen to the remaining part of the message and discern the intention. Are we together? And it is based on that we have libel men of God. It is based on that we have libel people. How many people are moving around and saying, my mother told me, I, you will see if you succeed. No. To mean that her actions meant she's, she's happy so that you will fail. Is that not true? And then it's, it gets so bad when you now go to a meeting where they say anybody standing against your family, that bed, where, even if it's your mother, you say, yes, even if it's my mother, you take that anger and say, my mother told me, or maybe my father said you are a failure. They may not really mean it. They may be communicating pain at that time. If you have the ability to look at intentions beyond actions, you are a wise man. Intentions. As I work with people, I always try to discern the intentions, the intent of certain things. Physical actions are not guaranteed. They are not the best way of truly revealing our intentions. A wife can come to her husband, for instance, maybe out of frustration about his carelessness, and she can make a statement out of pain and say, look, if you, don't, if you stop giving me money, make sure you are not going to be eating in this house. And the husband says, oh, if I don't give you money, I will not eat in this house. If I give you money, I eat in this house. You claim you are a deacon in your church. Is that what they are teaching you? No, husband, look at the intention. What your wife is trying to say is, I'm hurt by your irresponsibility. And I would love you to do something about it. Are we together? Listen, you, are, you become an exceptional leader, an exceptional believer if you sustain the ability to discern intentions we have we have created seditions in our families we have grouped ourselves into two a family of five people father and the, his favorite mother and the other three people because of our ability to judge intentions you look at a man whose face is like that whether he's happy or not his face is the same you just look at him and say this guy is a wicked person you look wicked i'm sure you are wicked whereas that person is the nicest person you will ever meet in your life have you seen people like that i don't like this guy his face is mean it's not the person's fault the person is like that your your face is this you will never get a wife or you will never do this we we judge actions more than anything A woman comes to Jesus with an alabaster box. Are we together? The Bible lets us know that this woman has had a challenging past. And then she gathered one year's wages. Are we together now? Beautiful woman. She steps into a room. And everybody is sitting there. Religious people. Together with the disciples. And this woman comes to Jesus sincerely. And gets down on her knees. And the first thing many people are thinking is seduction. Jesus, you are in trouble. Jesus, you are in trouble. Your ministry is about to die. Nobody is thinking worship. A woman is coming with a genuine motive. Please, while you are laughing, take seriously. These are the things that the Lord told me. They are not things that I guessed. Destroying the body of Christ. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. When your mind is corrupted, it becomes the vista from which you interpret everything. Hallelujah. And she kneels down before him. 
and the Bible says she takes her alabaster box, breaks it at his feet. Right? And the aroma and the, the fragrance just rises as an incense of worship. That represented her worth for one year. And she broke it. And the Bible says she used her hair. Hey! Her hair. And then began to clean his feet. And Jesus did not do anything about it. I'm sure the disciples will say, Jesus. You better don't play games with us here. What is going on? Madam, where do you know this guy? That you come and break alabaster box. And Judas. Ah, why are you doing this? You would have gathered everything and let's give it to the poor. The Bible only records what Judas said. He didn't tell us what the remaining said. I can assure you he was not the only person that spoke. But Jesus said, don't, don't stop her. That was the word of God, the bread of life. He was looking at this woman's business. And he said, everywhere they talk about him, they will also make reference to this. Are we together now? He was able to look at her intentions. A woman who was caught in adultery, they never brought the man. She ran and came to Jesus Christ. Right? I mean, they pushed her there and they said, this and that and that. And Jesus looked at them. And he saw that woman. She felt sorry for herself. She felt sad. And she was just hoping there would be a hand to hold her and say, you can start again. And Jesus looked at all the psychophants and the religious people. And he says, he who has no sin among you, be the first to cast stones. When you learn to judge the intentions of people, I counsel people a lot. Are we together? And I talk to pastors, I talk to leaders. There are times a man of God can come and meet me and say, man of God, I need you to pray for me. I love God, but I'm dying, I'm dying of immorality. I can easily look at that person and say, you, ah, are your members aware that you are dying of immorality? I look sincerely, and the only thing I tell them is, rebels don't come to God. They run away from him. When you come to God, it's a sign that you are not a rebel. And I look at him. How many times have we injured the wounded soldiers in the body of Christ? Because we look beyond. We don't look at intentions. We look at actions. Are we together now? Love. A husband looks at the wife and finds out that there is another man who has been suffering and out of compassion she's trying to help him and he says if you are having an affair tell me now let me kill you and kill myself why don't you come down and say okay I, I i see your motive that you really want to help this person but i'm a bit uncomfortable with it why don't you structure it and do it this way and that do you know this simple thing I've, i'm telling you has broken marriages has scattered churches are we together? Has produced eternal enemies. Men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball. Brothers and sisters. All kinds of people. Because we are experts at judging actions. Above intentions. Learn this tonight. If you are in this. You are short circuiting the glory of God from your life. Meaning he can never send to you. A lady who comes to you and says man of God. I've been involved in abortion 12 times. He said, young lady, are you seeing that door? It's still open. Forward march. No. No. God is love. The Bible says, for he causes the sun to rise on both the just and unjust. Part of my desire in life is that my hands will remain open as a place of succor for wounded people. That every time they look around and there is nowhere they can run to, they can find a heaven. That we can clean their tears and wash the garments together. And by the grace of God, Koinonia will remain that place. We will never drive our wounded soldiers. We will never drive people that are far away. There are people who have given their lives to Christ. But for some reason, because of pressure, maybe family and all of that, they derailed and they got into all kinds of things. Every time we meet those people, do you go to church now? Say, man of God, I've not gone to church. You are such a stupid person. 
Jesus helped you, you would have died that day, blah, 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 and you are a disappointment to the kingdom. Huh? This is what you are doing. Whereas that gentleman or that lady, if you would look at their intentions, what they are saying is, I need help. Can somebody please help me? We want crowd. I wrote a song years ago. One day I will sing it for you. It's called The Bandage is Larger Than the Wound. Powerful song. If I produced an album, I would have blessed people and made money from that song. Worship team, I will give you people when you are ready to write your Very powerful. The bandage is larger than the wound. When his loving arms surround you, he binds that broken heart. And then I, I can't remember the rest, but I mean, what a beautiful song. Imagine somebody singing that kind of song to you. Come on. When was the last time someone ran to you and believed that they are coming to you, you will be able to understand them. One of the greatest gifts people can give to you is that trust that you have the ability to understand them. Do you know how people crave to be understood? Are we together now? God, that's why God took out time to send the Holy Spirit so that you can understand him. It pains the Lord when we misunderstand him. When people turn and say, God, if you were alive, why did my father die? If you were alive, why did my mother die? If you were alive, why did I lose the job? So he sends the Holy Spirit to teach you the word. Because in teaching the word, you will correct the wrong ideologies you've had about him. So he will begin to teach you all the laws of the kingdom. And in it, you will now look and say, wow. So my poverty was not caused by you. There is something I did not know. God, you are a faithful God. And I'm sorry for blaming you for something you do not have a hand in it. God left the Holy Spirit so that he will be understood. Listen, come to a point in your life where you learn to judge intentions behind motives. I think two years ago, a man sent me a text. His daughter slapped him. Real daughter, biological daughter. Gave the father a slap and spoke all kinds of nonsense against the man and said this and that and that. If he plays with her, she will arrange uh, uh, what they call it. All these boys that don't have anything they are doing, you just give them anything and they come and beat somebody for you. Now, he says that they will make that arrangement and come and beat the father. The man was wise because the ego of a man will not tolerate that. He will first kill the lady first before he will look for the man of God that will raise her back to life. But then this man did something. I'm, I'm not just opening up people's secrets. I just want to use it as a point. The man did something that taught me a lesson on fatherhood. When the daughter slapped him and did everything, he picked up his phone and called me. It was ringing, ringing. I saw the number ringing and then I picked up. And then he said, ask this person. I said, how are you, sir? It's been a while. And he says, you will not believe if I tell you this, Apostle. I said, what is it, sir? He said, can you imagine my daughter? Of course, it doesn't mean he was calm and soft. He was boiling and angry. But he was able to contain himself. My daughter that I gave birth to takes a hand and slaps me because she has begun to follow men that are my age. You know, and all, you know how men talk when they are angry. And a sector is sector. And he did this and that. And then um, I began to talk and I told him, I said, Daddy, I, I know that this is very bad and this and that. And then he calmed down. And then he said, you know what, Apostle, this is, this is where the story is. He said, it reminds me of what we do to the Lord all the time. I felt ashamed at once. I just, I felt, oh God, how many times did I slap you from morning till now? And then the man said, I just wanted to express it to you. I'm her father. I'll work on it. Until this lady left, she was still attending Koinonia. Ever sorry for that attitude. And today her and her father, I may not call them best of friends, but she honors him with her life because he did something to her. He told me that later in the evening he sat her down 
and he says any lady that disrespect her parents will die the bible says it and began to talk to the lady and i was surprised i was very surprised that the lady booked for counseling when she came for counseling she never knew that the father had spoken to me i wanted to see what she was going to come and meet me for and she opened up and told me said i did something that is unthinkable i think i'm cursed i said no no you are not cursed this and that and that and that and in my presence she called the father and apologized to him and i have a lot of wine i carried one wine i say apology is not enough carry this wine pray in tongues on it and go and apologize also apologize to your mother that's her husband you slap and all of that and everything was over now listen listen what is the point of all this story the father though angry had the ability to see the motif the motivation and was able to contain himself and by it he won the lady imagine if he fought her and and injured her or did something fire for fire never produces a solution it ends up in ashes this is what many pastors have done this is what many people have done some of us sitting right here this is what we have done to our family members we have brought seditions and bitter hatred among one another especially for families that are polygamous i'm sorry to say it, but i have to address it families that are polygamous we are experts at creating intentions i saw stepmother standing near the pot and they said nobody should eat there's trouble no 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 learn to judge intentions say i receive grace to look beyond actions and see the intentions of people your roommate comes in and she's edgy and moody and all of that and you don't take out time to find out probably she saw her results and things were bad or they just called her at home and said something had happened and you just look and say smile jerry and say please 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 i'm not in the mood say sorry oh don't ever talk to us too again if you are like that no learn to look at the intentions of people there are people who have passed me for instance sometimes they pass me they don't even greet me i don't turn and say come on let's let's define something here no 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 men will love you and they will give their life for you if they know that you are one person who has sustained the ability to look beyond the motives hallelujah yes ago i managed one very serious issue one guy got a lady pregnant and um, the families were coming for counseling and they came and met there they didn't plan to come but the two families came to report the situation and then they met there it was it was a catastrophic event that happened i mean um i i say all of these things just to just to help you it was a serious thing you know and of course you know it's not going to be a bed of roses there will be tearing people and all of that and, and so on and so forth but the first thing i tried to discern i wasn't really concerned about the loved ones i was looking at the individuals forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance let me tell you something you need to understand forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance if if i walk up to tosin today and i insult her and i just say sorry sorry with the intention of insulting her again if okay it's called rebellion forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance what is repentance a genuine state of brokenness and a change of heart so that you do not misunderstand what i'm saying and then allow people to take you for a ride forgiveness is useless when there is no repentance the second thing the lord showed me that communicates lack or the absence of the love of god in the body of christ and among believers is that we hate people and we fight people for sustaining perspectives that are different from ours this is a big one we hate people and we fight people for sustaining a paradigm 
that is different from ours is a major mistake I've seen in the body. The moment your thinking is not like my own, Joshua Selman, I hate you. The moment my perspective is not like your own, I hate you. And this is probably a, a very big one, especially among denominations. Because we have tremendous hatred. There are people who will see a lady or a guy from another ministry or another denomination and never knowing the person, they already have anger and hatred and resentment. There are people for, for putting on a watch like this, you can already be angry. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you just dressing well is enough to create anger. There are people when you see somebody who doesn't dress very well, you are still angry. It's, 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 a, it's an issue of concern, but not enough to be that angry. We fight people who do not sustain similar ideologies. This is what causes trouble between siblings at home. This is what causes trouble between pastors. Are we together now? Listen. If you really want to love people, you must have an ability to respect people's perspective about life. It is very important. The whole world cannot be koinonia. The whole world cannot be Joshua Selman. Let me guarantee you if the whole world is like me, this world will be a mess. I repeat, if the whole world is like me, this world will be a mess. I know you like me because I'm preaching. You have not seen how boring other areas of my life are. Trust me, if you know how boring other areas of my life are, how about coming to meet me wanting to crack a joke and all I'm telling you is scriptures. Do you like that? Well, forget about the guys. Ladies, do you like that? Do you want to marry that kind of person? <laughs> are we together now? You can see the ladies responding. It's easy to see me preach and think, oh, this is wonderful because you are seeing revelation. But let me tell you one truth. Listen, brothers and sisters. If you don't learn to respect people for their perspectives. If I make you, if I make Pastor Femi, for instance, the president of ENI for one year, you'll be amazed at the remarkable changes that will happen in the ministry. You will find out that Koinonia may step into another dimension. Better ideas, better creativity. However, you must have the ability to um respect people's ideologies this is why some pastors can never be invited to preach in other churches aside from their churches i've preached almost everywhere i've preached in serubim and seraphim they like me oh, two of their branches i've preached there i've preached in anglican i've preached in uh, um, 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 catholic equa cooking lutheran i've preached open air crusade I preach all kinds of things. The one with no name. Youth group. Charismatic. Everything. You know why? Listen. Among other things, I have sustained an ability to respect. Listen. Don't major on the minors. A minor on the majors. I give you an instance. You go to minister in a charismatic meeting, for instance. And then, you know, uh, um, they are... They are they are making their, their uh, recitations and all of that. And you just come because you are a pure Pentecostal charismatic. You put your hand and you are wondering what the hell is going on here. What are all these people doing? That terrible childish attitude will put you off. When you study global leadership, one of the principles of global leadership is the ability to be accommodating yet not compromising. The ability, the Bible puts it this way. It says you are in the world, but not of the world. You don't have to bend to your values, but your, your ability to tolerate people's differences must be elastic enough to accommodate people with different perspectives and ideologies. There are churches where if you don't dance, you are in trouble. Immediately they are dancing, people are dancing. And you just stand, you are just moving around. They say, oh God, please, we dance in this church. No, you, you have no right to harass anybody that way. That's bullying, that's intimidation. Again, in a church where people are generally conservative, someone is just dancing to God and dancing alone and you just tap him and say, sorry, uh, 
I don't know what exactly is happening to you, but I think you have. No, it's still wrong. Are we together? If in your house you eat with fork, spoon, and knife, if you come to my house, I say, please bring warm water for me. We don't eat swallow with, with fork and spoon and knife in our house. You should be able to respect that. Not to look and say, oh God, we were all, we all grew up in UK and we respect. No, 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 no. You don't do that. When was the last time you were able to be bending enough to accommodate people's differences? And then you will see why many churches are losing members because of the rigidity. They are unbending. There are so many churches, their youths are leaving and running away because they, they have put stringent conditions and will not have that sense of accommodation. I remember when Koinonia started, I got a lot of text messages. Some said, look, let's go heal song, let's sing contemporary. Others said, no, 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 no. We are not proud of Africa with Nigerians the way you do. Let's be singing our local songs. And I said, thank God, God didn't call us. God called me. I will listen to God. If you are not comfortable, come and sit down after praise and worship. There is still a path for you to enjoy. Are we together? love don't fight people that sustain a perspective that is not your own there are churches for instance there are men of god who preach with audio visuals you see them they they have to use powerpoint are we together because of the nature of the teaching grace upon their life they take root words together and put them down and they want to make you understand you may come from a, a ministry where the moment they say praise the lord somebody shouting under the anointing now you go to a place where you sit down and somebody is trying to join this word and say please i need solid food i i, I what is all this uh, don't i know the meaning of art or of no we don't have that accommodation is robbing us we never are able to see the power of god there are churches that i go to i know that they don't pray in tongues publicly i will minister there you will never hear me pray in tongues once it doesn't mean i've stopped believing in it but i must be able to make that adjustment so that the people can receive are you getting what i'm saying now absolutely there are churches that may not give that kind of accommodation for you to be jumping around like this you can't go to a church, for instance, a core orthodox church, and when you are shouting the next thing, you climb a chair and you are giving an illustration, or you come and tap one elder and say, Prof, come, come, come on, come on, let me use you as an example. You are messing up. Listen, learn what I'm giving you wisdom. Learn this. Some of us, out of our zeal, you think everywhere is like your church. No. There are churches for putting water on this table. You are, you are going to answer a lot of questions. Not even to talk of five alive or banana or apple. You are in trouble. Apple, what for? But there are churches, if you don't do that, they will query you. Are we together? You come and you see banana and orange. Don't just come and say, are they, why are they not eating at home now? No. Don't do that. I'm teaching you how to love the body. Because these are the things that cause trouble. Are we together? This keyboard that is playing now, there are churches when a man of God stands everywhere becomes silent. No drums, no moving around, no camera, no snapping. No even saying yes. You know, like you respond, but no, 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 you don't do this. This thing you are doing now, this laughing, no, you don't do that. You are silent and you maintain an attitude of sober reflection. That's all right. That's all right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are very few hymns I don't know. That's why when I get to any church, hymn book or not, once you raise the hymn, I will sing it. I think it was in, 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 in um, All Saints or so that I went to minister, I think a year or two or so ago. And then uh, I was telling them that I can, I can recite the Apostles' Creed beginning to end. I was a seminarian. I still am. Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi prayed, prayed, prayed and hoped that I would become a seminarian. But God just decided to call me. I'm still a seminarian. Hallelujah. What is your level of accommodation in the body of Christ? Can an Equa church invite you as a pastor 
and you can go and bless the people without breaking people's hearts and doing all kinds of nonsense. Can a Catholic church invite you and you go and get blessed? This is how some of us behave even when we go to certain families. You see men behave like that. You go to the family, you find out that they remove their shoes in front and you just step and match and enter and they say, sorry sir. They are even trying to tell you, you embarrass the person you are taking. And the lady is trying to say, my brother, I don't know how to tell you, but please just remove your shoe. My mother is a very neat person. I'm not ready for trouble here. And they say, what is all that? According to what the Bible says, if you enter, he that receives a prophet, and you start bringing all kinds of childish things, and you leave that home and cause trouble for the people. The mother now looks and says, are these the kind of useless pastors that you move around with? Let me not see you with any of them. You must be accommodating, yet not compromising. I will never fight anybody who sustains an ideology that is different from me, including the Muslims. Most of the people, most of the people who have the cars, that's why there are many churches, Muslims hate them because they hate Muslims. Are we together now? No. Terrorism. And an, an, an extremist mindset is not the same. I have met a lot of Muslims that are absolutely nice people. Of course, anybody without the Holy Spirit, there's no guarantee to the person. But I'm telling you, there are people who have been able to sustain certain abilities. One, one of my drivers used to come, he's, he's, um, he has some three children. I've never seen well-behaved Hausa girls like that. They came to visit me one time during Salah. And after, you know, they brought small food for me to appreciate me and all of that. And then I gave all of them one 1,000 naira. And all of them, in concert, they kept tiny children. Ale Saka the Alheri. Ale Saka the Alheri. I said, my goodness, when was the last time a tongue-talking Christian child? You say, baby, how are you? say, bring it. And he's even crying. This is what we have trained our children to do. Yet we have the audacity. Listen, the Bible says he sends the sun. He makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good. The only place where you see love is when an accident happens. Everybody rushes to rescue them because they don't want to care who is who. There are some of you, your destiny helpers sustain a paradigm that is different from yours. And if only you could make that adjustment, they can take you from where you are. Maybe the boss, you went to look for a job and you found out that the boss comes from a denomination you hate. And you just turn and say, this is it. See, let me tell you the truth. If you don't change your outlook about the body of Christ, the body of Christ can never be your church alone. I've told you again and again, stop thinking koinonia, think kingdom. Koinonia is only a small fraction of what God is doing. Joshua Selman is only a contributor to the big thing that God is doing. That's why you never see anybody come and stand up here and say, I called upon the God of Joshua Selman. Call upon it, wonderful, but in your room there. Don't come and infect people with an ideology that makes it look like it is just God of Joshua Selman that answers. God of this, God of every true believer answers. If he doesn't answer, you don't know him, you don't know his ways, or he's not your God in the first place. Many men of God are embarrassed. So you go to a place. How many pastors, brothers and sisters, go for meetings and many of them cannot preach because of the presence of certain pastors. They go somewhere, I'm a grace preacher. Now I can't preach because this person believes in deliverance or believes in casting out of devils. Or the person who is preaching deliverance now sees another person who particularly doesn't believe maybe everybody let people listen i want you to know as i say this especially for ministries because i'm speaking apostolically listen listen to me listen to me i want you to know that fundamentally the motivation of every true believer is to love jesus and to serve him truly this is the common denominator that binds us all are we together now there are people i love passionately who we do not share the same spiritual ideologies. They may not be comfortable with the dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I may not be com comfortable with certain levels of revelation. But it does not, it's not enough reason whatsoever. We crack jokes about other things. Listen, the key to friendship is to concentrate on your similarity, not your differences. 
when you want to make money focus on your difference but when you want to make friends focus on your similarity the anger and the bitterness is growing in the church the enmity is even becoming have you seen people we are the members of this church we are the members of this sect we are the members of this prayer house we are the members of this place and then these ones come we are the members of this we are the ones for apostle joshua selman this one we are the ones for this and that these ones we are anglican these ones we are this and all of them and women of god are destroying the body of christ because we are raising people who are like political loyalists to a party rather than raising people who are kingdom conscious Let me tell you what is making if we don't correct this most of our youths for instance who come to meetings like this and taste certain superior levels of the word of god and the power of god some of them go back to their churches and then they don't go back with a heart of love they go back with cynicism and hatred the moment the pastor mounts up the podium they are angry because they are trying to compare what he's saying with what Apostle Joshua Selman says. And they feel this guy, even an usher in Kononia, knows more revelation than this guy. What did you even call your name? If you are doing that, stop it now. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Stop it right now. There is more to a pastor than the ability to preach. Wisdom. Experience. Pain. There are too many things that qualify a man to be a shepherd preaching is only one of them you may differ in ideologies but I want you to know that you must sustain that ability that whether it is Anglican or Catholic or deeper life or cherubim and seraphim or whatever it is the truth is that any true believer that loves the Lord with his heart and professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ deserves that reception and there are times that to blend you may need to make adjustments even though temporal adjustments you must make the adjustments if i go to minister for instance in maybe all saints and the rest i'll not start um raising songs like um shalom shalom no 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 how many of them know that song there i'm going to raise a powerful hymn and you see our mothers lift up their hands and thank God. I will adjust in a way that will open up their spirits to receive what God is saying. Is God giving us wisdom? This has destroyed the body of Christ. Some come and say, I am for Paul. Others come and say, I am for Apollos. Others come and say, I am for Agabus. And we men of God love it. We pride ourselves in all this political thing. There are men of God who never see eyeball to eyeball. They never pick one another's cult. In Nigeria, men of God have sent assassins to other people. No, no. Are you not amazed that whether it's Pastor Chris's crusade or Benny Hinn's crusade or Renhard Bonke's crusade or um, um, Dr. Olukoya's crusade or W.F. Kumuyi's crusade, you are seeing miracles happen. You are seeing God. At least we know that these people love God and they are serious. You can't say they are fake. Are we together now? It should tell you that if the same God who showers his anointing and grace upon them he knows what he's looking at the exact requirement brothers and sisters let's not forget that it's the same heaven we are going to heaven doesn't have branches so this annoyance and this resentment that we have against one another it should never be that way lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments never become an object of division in the body of christ don't become the reason why the church becomes divided hence powerless 
don't be the one sowing seeds the one sitting down to gossip and compare men of god and compare who has revelation and who has anointing in the meeting don't let that devilish thing be part of your life you must be able to embrace the diversity of the body god knows the reason why he left every denomination the full church is what will reveal christ any denomination you kick out will produce an incomplete church let me tell you the truth those of us who have this religious advocacy to wipe out other denominations and eventually have our denomination stand no sir no sir is deception from the pit of hell i came from an orthodox background before i received the baptism of the holy spirit and i started walking in the power of god and i thank god for that orthodox background because it's what has kept character in me right now i'm sorry to say it, but a lot of pentecostal charismatics because of our understanding of the kingdom there is a lot of carelessness and imbalance that's why a pastor can be preaching yet he's sleeping around and he says no problem whatever happens is i mean god is a merciful god that foundation they didn't get me filled with the holy spirit but they gave me a basis of understanding i remember then in the seminary when when we will have you must your quiet time he was he was now he's, he's now i think he's now uh is he a venerable now i can't I, I don't know what he is right now god bless him forever forever a man who changed my life he wrote a quiet time manual who will recite scriptures every day every day whether you like it or not you must recite scripture your quiet time manual, you must do it. Whether mechanically or religiously, you shall must do it. Because they, they supervise all of those things. I was trained in the Anglican. You never greet somebody standing to look at the person like this. This is how you greet, bowing down. No matter how tall you are. If two of you are fighting outside, three things will happen. One, they will call you and have a brief Bible study. Second, they will weep all of you. The offender and the offendee, the weep both of you. Once they are done, number three, one will kneel down and you pray, lay your hands and pray for him. He will stand up, you, you will kneel down and he will pray for you. I'm serious. Case closed. I told you we are raising a, when we start our schools, that's the way we are going to train the people. I tell you, you can bring your children to our school and go to bed because we will train them, weep out flesh, add the things that are of God and produce people of character. We don't just want people who are doing well. We want people who are living well. Hallelujah. Yeah. But right now, what do we have in the body of Christ? I go to minister all the time. And the moment I'm entering, usually there are crowds of people. Everybody looking. Where is he coming? And you see different men of God trying to square their shoulder. Me too. My name is Pastor This. I'm the pastor of this, this revival movement. And I just come and I greet them. Well done, sir. When I come up stage, I start by saying I honor every man, every woman of God, the pastors in this city. We see and we appreciate your contribution to the advancement of the kingdom. And you see all of them squaring up. Now you are talking. You are appreciating us too and all of a sudden their heart becomes open to the meeting people who would never some of them maybe even talked about me but just that five minutes their hearts are open listen listen people fight you when you try to trivialize their contributions never trivialize people's contributions no matter how little don't look at your father and mother one day and say i've had many people in my life who have who have built me i'm happy to say you are one of them no they are not one of them they are your parents are we together now yeah. people usually fight you when you give them an impression that their contributions are small or worthless there are ministries i may not really have any much revelation to learn from them but i can learn leadership i can learn excellence there are ministries i can learn prayer Part of the reasons why God has anointed me so much is because my heart is open over the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ, genuinely. Take away the hatred you have for certain denominations, certain men of God. You know it, I've told you. I never talk against any man of God. I don't care who. 
Never. You will never hear it from my mouth. I repented years ago and it will never happen. If I ever mention the name of a man of God is to say something commendable because I myself will stand before the white throne and I will be judged. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by your hand. Together we will walk until he comes. There's no what that stands between us. Hallelujah. So it's a major mistake. How much do you love people and are able to accommodate? There are people who are talkatives. They are noisemakers. All they are falling down has not removed it. Don't try to change it. Create an adjustment. Their mouths are like that. You are going to frustrate yourself trying to change it. There are others who are cons it would take you praying and fasting to get good morning out of them. Get used to it. Are we together now? I like this man of God, but I hate his wife. She talks too much. Sorry, she's his wife. She's already married. Accommodated. She plans to be his wife for all the lifespan of that ministry. So if you plan to be a member in that church, get used to all the erratic attitude. Get to the emotionalism go past it and focus on what God is doing are we together now never hate people for holding reservations don't look at Muslims moving around and the next thing you just look and say I hate these people no you are being devilish that's a Luciferian spirit because God sends he makes the sun to rise on both the evil and the good the bosses that convey you here after koinonia Every time I come out, I look at the people. They are greeting me and I greet them. I was telling protocol the other day. I said, make sure that we buy minerals for them. And we're happy. We crack jokes. We may have differences in faith and belief. And everybody has the responsibility to choose. But there are many other things that bind us. How many neighbors never talk face to face? Because one person is Hare Krishna. One person is... is, is uh, a, a member of this thing and you say I, I would never me enter this house and they bring food for you say carry your food and walk back I know what you did with it no you don't do that why don't you look away from the differences I may not believe in deliverance I may not believe in demons I may not believe in whether uh, uh, trouser or hair or whatever it is I may not believe there is heaven I may not believe there is this, but find a common ground. We are all human beings. Are we together? Never hate people. Listen, you know what hatred is? Hatred is, is a bitter dislike. It's a satanic thing. A bitter dislike. And usually, that hatred comes when people sustain a perspective that is different from yours. There are preachers... Who, when they go to preach and they see that there is an interpreter maybe somebody interpreting in Hausa or interpreting another language they put off their angry no. that's why I love Reinhard Bonke he's gone to almost every African continent with their attitudes I, I watched one of his videos he went to one African country Africans all students we know how to disgrace ourselves he went to one African country and before he even settled down, they took coconut and, and then they, 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 they scraped, they created O in the coconut and removed everything and told him to drink the water. And when he was drinking it, they were clapping. I said, is this how to honor a man of God? Don't stretch people beyond their limit. You believe in coconut as a way of welcome. You can keep it and you are stretching the man too much. This guy came all the way from Germany. Why come and put all of that pressure on him? But you notice Reinhard Bonke. If he's going to Lagos, you will see him wear Agbada. And you are wondering, Agbada, many of our white missionaries do it, right? You see them struggling to tie this thing, women tie. They can't do it well, but they are doing it anyway. And every time you see that, it blesses you. Love. Do you love the body? This looks simple, but it may be the reason why many of our prayers are not answered. Because we do not sustain that love for God and for the body of Christ. These are the contemplations that the Lord himself shared with me. We have extreme hatred for people who sustain a different perspective. We pray in tongues so much. 
yet there is hatred that is locked up in our mind we fast so much yet there is hatred that is locked up in our minds no remember the bible says even faith works by love are we together so i carried that heart of love i prayed and fasted dry for 10 days and i carried that attitude of hatred for the body of christ and i come and lay my hands on pastor femi and the power refuses to move and you find out that there are few miracles happening in our meetings i tell you that's why many men of god have very little miracles and the manifestations of the spirit no. never hate things that are different from your perspective hate people closely related to the subject of hatred the Lord asked me to talk about this I don't know why but he, he put in my heart the issue of temper and anger look up let me talk about it for five minutes the Lord began to talk to me do you know that what we call temper you know what I mean hot tempered attitude anger do you know it's a spirit look up please Koinonia, are you aware that anger is a spirit? Yeah. How many believers, especially the men, are hot-tempered? It's a terrible attitude. When you are involved in any ministry of deliverance, you know that the classic way of identifying the presence of demons in a person is that rage and temper becomes the expression. How many believers and they are going for a meeting and before the meeting the man beats up his wife beats her up and then steps into koinonia and is happy and says god is going to move now and you wonder why the power of god does not move you are trying to give a word of knowledge you are just giving nonsense because faith works by love say it after me faith works by love you finish gossiping about a man of god and a family and tearing people down and you stand and you want the glory of God to move around. No, it does not work like that. Love. Love. Oftentimes you will hear that Jesus was moved with compassion. Listen, if you are a hot-tempered person in this place tonight, if nobody has told you, you need help. Are we together? I don't care who you are. If you are hot-tempered, humble yourself, you need help. You will never be able to love people when you are hot tempered. Do you know why? Because people will do things every day that will annoy you. How many days? Every day. Pastors, your wife, your husband, and all of that. is killing people in the body of Christ. That's where all this revelation of causes and destroying people all of a sudden comes. No people will offend you members will do a lot of childish things especially if you are a pastor anybody who is a pastor or a leader here knows that working with people is a difficult thing because people's ideologies can be very interesting but do you sustain that ability to be cool and calm many marriages are breaking today because of temper hot temper the lady hears the man talking about something maybe he's talking to his sister and he says sweetheart how are you and the woman keeps quiet the man doesn't know what is happening the next thing he sees um, a knife she just stabs him and says, i didn't mean to do it but you just killed your husband as a true christian i don't care what degree of tongues you are praying when you become temperate the ability to absorb pain and pressure and yet be calm listen especially for we young people is one big secret of a healthy marriage hot tempered people are dangerous people they can do anything see closely related to that every time you are angry let me tell you how to manage it keep quiet because when you speak in anger the devil will take hold of your tongue and you will say things you cannot retreat back the bible says the birds can carry your words and take it far beyond your reach if you are angry at my preaching leave koinonia after all this is a, and then next sunday next week you come and you find out that all the members are angry they are going to say no 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 i don't mean that what is the meaning of that can't i at least be angry no no never justify anger 
and that hot tempered attitude god is speaking to many of us here great people how many of us have been robbed of the opportunity we have lost friends because of temper we have lost relationships because of temper we have lost destiny helpers because of temper we have lost anointings and graces because of temper tonight god is calling us to love people your heart must be very accommodating factor it as part of your life that people will annoy you every day every day hot temper it's too much in the body of christ i watch with shock the way preachers are hot tempered i've seen men of god talk to their wives in ways i could not believe a man turns and talks to his wife as if she's a piece of rag i counseled a case recently a woman who was thrown away by her husband a pastor for two months she was sleeping outside outside doesn't mean another place outside on background she will carry a wrapper in the night and you you will throw her outside two months god is my witness yet that man will come to church on sunday and dance and sing who is deceiving who temper how many pastors beat their wives i mean beat to matching them and say i will kill you how many pastors punish members because of anger kneel down raise your hand as if it's as if it's, it's they paid school fees they, they you, you gave them money to come to people innocently come to your church you punish them and make them look like idiots all these things we are doing let me tell you is very very bad and the lord is not pleased with it temper say in the name of jesus shout it in the name of jesus i receive grace to walk on anger and temper yes you will destroy more people than you know when you are an angry person especially for our sisters do you know the bible says it is better to stay on the rooftop of your house than to live with an angry woman think about that that you carry your mattress on your zinc to stay there rather than living with a woman that is contentious and angry these are the things that short circuit the power of god so we are fasting we are praying but there is temper there's resentment do you know that if i'm angry with tosin and i hate her if god gives me a prophetic word for tosin that word will be corrupted because that word will rub off on my unrenewed my angry mind especially if what god is telling her is a good thing prophesy to her that god will lift her and i'll now say god will lift you but god is saying you should mind the way you talk to men of god now that one is no longer god <laughs> are we together men of god and churches are trying to make men like them and not like jesus while it is true that when you become a leader you influence people you must be sure that the person you are following is following jesus not following a denomination not following a geo not following a, 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 a priest or pope or whatever following jesus paul said follow me as i follow christ some of you may never appreciate what i'm saying now until you see what these attributes will take out from your life they will take more some of our mothers and people here who are a bit elderly will understand exactly what i'm saying because these little attributes have cheated a lot of people they have lost opportunities that may never come again saved by the mercy of god people have lost jobs they entered interview places and and they try to make them angry on purpose i hope you know that they can make you angry on purpose just job interview you step in and they say what kind of stupid girl are you you step in you can't greet us you can't do everything and they say what the heck is it job and you bounce out and go and continue your suffering you are the one suffering whereas you fail the test i remember one gentleman who was ringing ringing my phone and he sent me a text he said god told me you are my spiritual father i didn't even answer him after like three days he said why are all men of god like this i said look at look at look at the person who is stalking three days 72 hours the same person who is making all that noise temper anger i will kill you we will die in this place i will remove my christianity when i beat you i will put no no don't remove your christianity leave it there 
It's not a garment you take off and put back. Listen, don't come and be a nice Christian in church and then go aside. But there are even believers that fight. You, you know, ba? As in, I mean, I don't mean words, verbal fight, real fight. When they finish, they'll be boiling and they say, Remember, Jesus died for you. And they're, they're, don't do that if I have a daughter I would never give a, a, my daughter to an angry man I don't care what he has he's a dangerous man men have destroyed children in the womb of women because of anger this is your house your home we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you. God knows from the depth of my heart that I love everybody in Koinonia. I may not know everybody by name, but I love you. You see me greeting people after service. I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to know who your father is, who your mother is. I never treat people and say, you, your father is a senator. You, your mother is, your father is an iron bender. You stand here. You stand here. I don't want to know who is who. I love people genuinely from the depth of my heart. In fact, that's the meaning of my name, the way to love. Do you love people enough to receive the anointing to change them? When I counsel sometimes from morning till night, I am tired and I'm hungry. It's because of love. I think all that I'm, I've taken today is just a drink that I took at the airport. I couldn't even think of saying I'll try to get a meal to eat. Why? Why should I be eating when there are people who are sitting and waiting for the word of God to change them? Why should I say, ah, I, I want to be... No, 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 no. no. I love you too much. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down not matches on the sheep lays down emoji you want power you are fasted you have prayed i'm showing you the other sides of the equation love i love god's people whenever i shout and quarrel you here there are times that i'm hard on you in my teachings but you can look beyond my teachings and know that i'm communicating from a heart of love I will never open my mouth and speak resentful and hateful words against anybody that God has created. No. no. You know that song? I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied you are important to me i need you to never rejoice at the downfall of others you will never be anointed that way don't celebrate when a man falls are we together now you hear that armed robbers came and robbed the church. You laugh and say, I, I, I knew it. They don't have faith. No. The pain of the body should be your pain. The joy of the body should be your joy. I'm teaching you what we call a corporate life. You must learn to hide your individualism. And let the church rise and be exalted. And sometimes you may need to constrain your honor and allow the body. When people send a lot of miracles, text messages with many things that have happened, sometimes I send it to the workers. You will never hear me use words like my ministry or my church. If you hear me use that, it, it was a slip of tongue or something that just happened because it is never my church. I'm only a steward. It's never my ministry. Before I was born, God was still at work. If, I, if it tarries after, long after I'm gone, I will only be one of many that has brought my contribution. I will never look down on the body of Christ. I will never look down on any man that is made in the image of God. I have seen people who look like nothing. And within one, two, three years, God raised them. Some of us were like that. If we were to follow based on the standards of men, some of us would probably not be able to enter some of the places we are entering right now. 
but God has the ability to see the motif of men's heart. That's why many of us who think we are qualified never receive anything. And there are others who approach God and we say, Lord, if there is any vessel you are looking for, find one in me. I never forget where he's brought me from. I never forget what he's doing in my life. I love him with my life and I love his word and I love the body of Christ. Everyone say after me, I love the body of Christ. I love God's creation. Yes. Do this little thing, brothers and sisters, and you will see doors open. I know many of you will be expecting me to say something great and something charismatic. Never trivialize what I am teaching you right now. Not only will it give you character, it will sustain your open heavens. As a pastor, people never become loyal to you until they discern that you love them. Many pastors hate their members. They only use their members. Use their members. There was a time I rebuked the protocol department. I said, why did you withdraw security? They said, ah, there is peace and calm. I told them, I said, peace or no peace. Make sure that we have adequate securities at all times. Not just during koinonia, but any activity. Let there be correspondences with security because I love God's people too much. God brought these people as a trust. We must be able to take care of them. You don't want to imagine how much we spend every week transporting buses, the chairs and the rest. And the protocol department know they will never meet me once and say, are we not spending too much? It is never too much for the people that God is going to raise to become mighty people. It is never too much. Love. Love. There remain these three. Faith, hope, and love. But the Bible says the greatest is love. Let me show you one scripture as we round up. One scripture that has blessed me so, so much. 1 John 4 verse 16. Please media, give us 1 John 4 verse 16. These words came very strong upon my heart and I pray that it will be strong upon your heart the same way it came upon my heart. Go ahead and read. Let's read together. One, to read. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Listen. He said God is what? He didn't say God has love. He didn't say God loves he said, God is love. And then, this is what he says. He says, he that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God and God in him. Not he that prays in tongues. He that dwells in love. Your life becomes like a magnet when the love of Christ is at work in you. Listen, there are people on this earth, when you stand close to them, you literally feel the love of Jesus like a river flowing you know there is nothing you do that will drive them away from you they love you may god make you such a person in the name of jesus christ this is one big secret of the anointing of the spirit upon my life every time i come for koinonia and i sit down here i watch the protocol department doing their thing the ushers doing their thing and the love of god falls upon my heart for them as i stand and see the way they are struggling to make sure things work i never come here morning or afternoon to supervise what they are doing sometimes as early as eight o'clock in the morning they are already working doing everything and i look at them every worker in koinonia they know that i love them with my life not just because we, we put dinners for them. I love them with me. I will give my life for the workers. I will. And I mean it with, 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 with no words. I will never watch somebody come around me who is hungry. If you know me very well and you are close to me, after greeting you, I ask you, what have you eaten? And you try to say, no, no. I say, what have you eaten? If it is 500 naira that I have, we will share it. Listen, brothers and sisters, when the heart of love is at work in you, power will never be far from you. Never. Never be far from you. God will be able to bring members. God will be able to bring children. God will bring people that you will build. He that dwells in love is very important. 
it's not enough to pursue anointing it's not enough to pursue lifting and fame you must love people love overrides prayer love overrides fasting first corinthians 13 i just feel we should round up here first corinthians 13 as we round up we are going to examine ourselves and our love lives as far as god is concerned god is doing a circumcision in our hearts tonight for though i speak with the tongues of men look up everyone and the tongues of angels there is no man alive who has entered this spiritual dimension where you can flow in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels and the bible says even if you get to that realm it says and have not love can we have a version that says love if there is it says i am become as what a sounding brass or a tinkling symbol in other words if i become such a man of god that i can speak both in the tongues of men right i am nothing verse 2 let's hurry up media please help us verse 2 and if i have prophetic powers is that not what we are looking for we are looking for it passionately chasing every man of god with handkerchief and and oil somebody met me in a meeting and just he just opened it and said man of god breathe on this oil i mean i just said god bless it it is done he just closed it i said you see the kind of thing we are talking about if i have prophetic powers the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose he says and i understand all secret truths come on now this is the realm of rema insights that we are looking for the bible says even if you rise to that point and you possess the mysteries and possess all knowledge then it says if i have sufficient faith no one on earth i know has gotten to that dimension so that you can remove mountains but have not love the bible says i am what on earth if i raise 10 wheelchairs my name will be on poster everywhere what will they call me great man of god tomorrow we are going for a crusade right and there will be all kinds of miracles in that crusade i'm sure the people are excited right now as i was passing coming i saw one small poster and i saw my face there i just nodded my head and we, and, i mean we just passed i, I saw the poster you know it is in barnawa the crusade is in barnawa tomorrow barnawa for christ crusade and while we were coming i saw somewhere they just put my face i said somebody will see this now and say ah this man of god while they are laughing and clapping this is what god is saying he says if i have all this power to raise wheelchairs and prophesy and teach mysteries and i have not love based on men's standard i'm a great person they will give me money they will sow into my life they will deceive all these deceitful things that happen but the bible says i am nothing empty zero useless verse 3 even if i dole out all that i have i dish out the giving dimension now even if i give out everything i have to the poor in providing food and if i surrender my body to be burned or in order that i may glory but i have not love he says i gain what do you know what it means to give yourself to die? How many people have we rejoiced and said they died for others? When we get to heaven, you will see that their reward may be small for some of them. Love is a big deal to God. Love endures long. Now give us King James. We're ready to be kings. Give us King James. Charity does what? Suffers long. The word long suffering, there's the word patient now everywhere as i read on wherever the word charity is except your name is charity i want you to put your name there ready we'll just read it one two read joshua selman suffers long and is kind joshua selman envies not read it you are reading it joshua selman vaunted not itself and is not puffed up stop is that true about you is that true that you are patient are you a patient person is that true about you that you are kind is it true i know you pray in tongues 
I know you are a miracle worker. You are an apostle. You are a prophet. Is it true that you do not envy? Oh, how many believers die in envy? It's not puffed up. You don't lift up yourself. Trying to show that you are better than others. Because of whatever privileges you have. Next verse. We're rounding up. It says it does not behave itself unseemingly. And then love seeketh not her own. The meaning of that is that you prioritize people and their needs even above yourself. In other words, you are not selfish and self-centered. Is that true? Is that really true about us? Aha, here is the point. It's not easily angered or provoked. Thinketh no evil. When was the last time you saw people and you did not think negative about them? To look at a lady and say, this lady looks like a prostitute. What of this lady looks like the kind of vessel God will use? Says, does not think evil. Verse 6. Rejoice not in iniquity. So you see, living in iniquity is also a sign that the love of God is not in you. Because when you love him, you will love to please him. When you love your fellow man, you will not come and destroy your fellow man and do all these kinds of things. But rejoice it in the truth. Seven. It peereth all things. Endurance. There are times that for the sake of the love you have for people, you will endure a lot of things. It believeth all things. It hopeth all things. It endureth all things. Eight. It says love never fails. Everyone say it after me. Love never never fails he says but whether there be prophecies they shall what that means even the prophetic realm has errors and limitations he says whether there be tongues utterances communications the bible says they shall cease whether there be knowledge rema revelation he says they shall vanish away verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part. 10. We are reading down to 13 or 14. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. 11. When I was a child, void of love, I proved it by speaking like a child. I understood like a child and I thought like a child. Tonight's teaching is making us become mature people. It says, now that I am a man, I am matured. I put away what? childish things that means something about your speaking must change after tonight's meeting something about your understanding must change after tonight's meeting something about your thought life must change your action it says for now we see through a glass go to verse 13 please 13 and now abided what hope faith hope and love these three it says but the greatest is love what is the greatest the greatest brothers and sisters is not building a ministry the greatest is not becoming a man of god the greatest is not becoming a custodian of kingdom mysteries and revelation the greatest is not just having power and anointing no the universal scent is love at the end of my life i want this to be said about me that I love God with all my heart. I served him with all my heart. And that I loved humanity with my all and my heart. I don't want no credit to my name that I built houses and bought cars. And um, what happened? I traveled abroad. I own jets. I own all those things. Thank God for them. But I sincerely do not want all of these things added because they are all useless. I have learned early in life the vanity of anything that is outside love. When we get to heaven, they are not going to ask how many wheelchairs were raised. They are not going to ask how many suits you wore. They are not going to ask how many Versace you bought. They are not going to ask how many first class flights you entered. All that matters when you stand before him love and if the love of God is not found in you this is scary but let me tell you the truth you are going to hell 
you are going to hell without the love of God, for sure. So we are going to pray tonight. Very briefly, rise up on your feet. In one minute before we pray, please everyone rise if you can. If you can, please rise inside and outside. I just want you to close your eyes for one minute and reflect on what I've taught tonight. Love. The Bible says God is love and he that dwells in love dwells in God. I want you to reflect in one minute how much the love of God has dried away from your heart and how much your love for the body of Christ has been questionable. I want you to think of how your life has contributed to destroying the life of others if in any way it has. Or the way your life has contributed in destroying churches, ministries, men of God, the body of Christ. Think of how you have brought denominational barriers and destroyed people's faith. Think of how you have castigated pastors and made people not to listen to them. It's time for change. I know you're looking for power. I know you're looking for anointing. I know you're looking for money. You're looking for increase. We all are searching for these things. But I'm showing you the way. God is speaking to us. Some of us here, imagine how many relationships you have destroyed because of lack of love. Imagine people who would have been married now, but because you do not sustain the love of Christ, you destroy best friends. Imagine destinies you have turned around and aborted. Some of you have even made marriages to be divorced. You have made pastors to hate other pastors. You have carried news that are not newsworthy. You have made ministries to fight themselves. If you want to see the glory of God upon your life, the law must be at work. Imagine how many times you have held unforgiveness in your heart against people, your husband, your wife, your brother, your child, fellow believers. It's time to let go. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray and say, Lord, let it go. I release it tonight in the name of Jesus. All the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hurt, I release it and let it go tonight in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Please, we are praying very seriously. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, never will I be an enemy of the advancement of your kingdom. Never will I be the reason why someone's destiny will be jeopardized. Never will I be the reason why the body of Christ will crumble. I repent of ignorance. I repent of childishness. The Bible calls love the bond of perfectness. That's why I call it the mystery of perfection. This is the ancient mystery that makes men perfect. Mature. Lift your voice and pray and open up your heart before God. Lord, I've fought people who do not agree my, with my Christian perspectives. I've fought men of God and ministries. I've fought people who are gifts from God to me. Who would have changed my life. But I've resented them because of their ideologies. I have hated people of other religions. I have hated people who sustain a different perspective to life than my own. Anybody who is not like me becomes my enemy. I repent tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Change my heart. Change my heart. No more hatred. Lift your voice and rebuke the spirit of hatred. It's a spirit. Hatred is a choice. You can choose to love and you can choose to hate if there are people you hate and you hold on in your heart i like you to begin to release them right now i release my mother i release my father i release that pastor i release my church i release this denomination i release my wife and my husband hatred is a choice love is a choice hallelujah two more prayer points very quickly we are going to pray against anger and that hot tempered attitude please listen if you are here and you know you are suffering from anger 
you are not going to come out but i want you to be honest and pray and say lord i'm tired of this thing it's destroying my life it's destroying valuable relationships don't pretend and say i'm a this and that open your mouth and pray temper sisters make sure you pray brothers make sure you pray the bible says do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It says, don't give the devil a foothold. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I choose to be joyful. I choose to be a happy person. Regardless of circumstances. Are you praying tonight? I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of anger from my life. I cause the spirit of resentment and cynicism and unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. I cause the spirit of anger, that hot tempered attitude that hurts others, whether with words or actions or thoughts. Pray it out of your life. Pray it out of your life. I'm a changed person tonight. I make up my mind for change. I make up my mind for change. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I want my life to host the glory of God. I want to be a genuine career of His power and His glory. And I lay aside the weight and the encumbrances that rob me from carrying the glory of God. Hallelujah last prayer point let's hold hands all over this building hold the hands of someone I'd like you to pray for yourself and pray for koinonia passionately from your heart lift up your voice and say Lord like a mantle may your love come upon everyone and upon the house go ahead and pray Lord a baptism of love in every department among the leaders among the executives pray for love pray for me pray for love let the love of god that bond of perfectness be at work in my brother and my sister now pray for the person whose hands you are holding pray you don't need to know them you don't need to know their tribe you don't need to know where they are coming from there's one thing that binds us all together that we love the lord some of them may be struggling in sin but pray for them you love them some of them may be wounded soldiers they may have made mistakes they may have messed up in different areas but you must pray for love pray for your family members many of them may not deserve your love but i like you to pray and say lord the love of god in my heart the love of god across my neighbor How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. Because you are my God. You are my God. You are my God. Tonight, you have come to the Lord. Whether you believe Him or not, He is still Lord. The earth is the Lord's. Listen, there are four conditions for anyone to be called Lord over a territory according to psalm 24 and verse 1 psalm 24 and verse 1 gives us the litmus test if we must call you lord there must be four things that you must own number one the earth number two the resources the fullness number three you must control the mind system the mind control system and number four the inhabitants if you own the land 
and you don't own the resources, you are not Lord. You must own the earth, the physical environment. Number two, you must have dominion over the resources within that territory. Number three, you must control the mind of the people. By control, that means that it is your values that influence the thinking of the people. And then number four, you must have influence over the inhabitants there. This also is the principle of territorial dominion. If you want to take over a territory for Jesus, please keep that scripture there. This must be the four things you look for. Dominion over land. Dominion over the resources within that territory. Dominion over the mind control systems and influence over the inhabitants. That territory is over. Whoever wills control over the land, the resources, the mind control system, and the inhabitants is Lord. This is all Satan looks for. When Satan comes to a territory, he wants to empower men who would own physical land because there is a dimension of faith and dominion that is tied to land. This is for another day. So we know that he is Lord because he owns the earth. He owns the resources. The Bible says the cattle on a thousand hills even belong to him. The mind control system and they that dwell therein, they all belong to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. So, if you believe in the Lord, the mighty God of heaven, and then you believe in his servants, the Bible clearly tells you that you have fulfilled the condition that makes for possibilities. Most people, listen carefully, most people believe in the Lord, but He has not become their God. You may be seated here, all across and following online. You came to church. You're welcome. And that is wonderful and even commendable. But this Lord, who is a miracle worker, within a few minutes from now, we're going to be celebrating the triumph of light over darkness. The triumph of the power of God over mundane principalities and powers. God himself will flaunt his glory once again in the midst of his people. He's going to be signing a signature like Julius Berger will build. And if you are saying who built it, there you will see a big B there. God is about to do something and sign his signature upon your life. That everyone who sees cannot say this is your boss. No, this cannot be your boss. This cannot be your mother-in-law. This cannot be some politician somewhere. This one is God. But hear me. You can receive miracles tonight. You can celebrate what God is doing. Following across the nations of the earth. You can receive all kinds of things and leave. And if they ask you, who healed you? You can tell them, the Lord. If they ask you, who lifted you from this dungeon? Who broke this age-long captivity? But for us, we will not just say the Lord. I will say he is the Lord, my God. I can introduce you to him. If you tell them the Lord, you don't have a relationship with him to extend his power to others. You should not just stop as the Lord. He must become your God. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my king and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen, you've heard me say it here, believers. Listen, when you go to a herbalist, when you go to some kind of necromancer or one who manipulates the realm of the spirit, in an attempt to provide solutions. Did you know that he does not need a relationship with you? You don't even need to know his name. How many native doctors have given their names to people? They don't care. Because the, the point of contact is just your need. It's not a relationship. But you see, 
when you come to this God, He's not just interested in giving you a miracle, power, job, healing. <clears throat> he feels it's an insult to give you those things first. The first thing He presents is Himself. Himself. Not just His power, Himself. And he's not ashamed to come and live within an individual. So that you don't just call him the miracle worker alone. You can also call him your God. This is where sometimes, respectfully speaking, men and women of God make this mistake. We keep presenting to people a God that is far and they watch his power, they watch his grace, they watch his wonders. And then at the end of it, we share the grace. And they leave having received from a stranger. They leave having been blessed by a stranger. Many of you go to the market and you have a few people you call customer. They call you customer, you call them customer. Is that true? If you are going to go and buy goat or a ram, sometimes you go straight to them because you know. In fact, sometimes you have a relationship with them. You can call. Do you have this? They say, oh, you are welcome. So it's true you are coming to buy. But sometimes, even before the buying and selling, you can sit down. How are you? How are your children? How is everything? You will even have nicknames. A day will come, you will sit down there and not talk about buying and selling. Because your relationship now is beyond what you are buying. What God is looking for, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me, believers. God does not just want people who just prostitute themselves around Him, come and pick miracle, come and pick breakthrough, come and pick healing, come and pick this. God, I've had enough. Let me run, eh? When I have a problem, I, I, I'm telling you, even if I don't know you, I know a man of God who knows you. And God says, I will love you because love is my nature. God does not have love. He is love. And He cannot deny Himself. However, there is a more excellent way. When he becomes your God. So that is, you don't have to wait until a koinonia service alone. Right there where you are. In your room. You can tell him, Lord, I thank you for your servant. But I also know that you are my God. When you meet Jesus, the first thing he gives you is not a miracle. Like a physical miracle. The first thing he gives you is not money, not cars, not a job. He offers himself. You can reject him. He will still respect your choice. This is the marvelous thing about him. You can say, Jesus, I'm not here for you. Just give me the job that I hear you can give me. And he says, well, I will give you because I love you. But is this all you want? I, I was preaching somewhere, I think it was in Enugu, and I was giving them an illustration. Imagine, for instance, let's say, for example, you have been calling me since yesterday. Apostle, I need to see you. It's an urgent issue. And I said, what is the issue? Say, I must see you. Imagine that you walk up to me, and all of a sudden, your attention is on my shoe or on my cloth. And I'm saying, okay, I'm here. And then, no, no, no. When I said I wanted to see you, it was not really you. I wanted to see your clothes through you. It's your cloth that I'm interested in. And you keep looking at the cloth and say, Taylor, just um, get this measurement. That's all I really want. Imagine the disappointment. All that call is just because you wanted something and not the person. So we pray and fast, God, come now. And when he shows up, we say, no, not your face. Just where is your hand? That's where I'm looking for. I hear that at your right hand there are pleasures. I don't want the left. Give me the right hand quickly. Let me get the pleasures and be on my way. It may look very funny, but Jesus is speaking to many of us right now. Believe in the Lord, your God. Believe in the Lord, your God. You have believed in the Lord, but can he become your God? You have come with pain. You have come with all kinds of issues. Many of us have written, you know, we've been having this miracle service for years, but there is no single month. Ministry has taught me that there is no exhaustion to the reality of human needs. Even if you were to hold a miracle service every day, you will still have people. That means when we say, if you have come for this week, don't come again. You will still see people as though they never received from God. 
because the needs of people keep increasing as one problem is solved the devil now tries to come to cause another problem again just when you are celebrating then he tries to bring sickness just when you are celebrating then he tries to bring something else but now thanks be to god which always causes us to triumph i sense in my heart to make the altar call now in this kingdom you strike when the iron is hot and now that the Holy Ghost has spoken to us, He needs to become your God. Now, can I be honest with you? There are many believers who are not serious with God. There are others who do not even believe Him. Some of you probably were invited by so many others. You are in the main auditorium. Some of you are down all of the overflows outside or following online. And you are saying, Apostle, I... I, I hope that this your God is really God. The Bible says you can taste and see that the Lord is good. You shouldn't just hear. You can eat. There can be an experience where you taste and see. Like going to a restaurant. You can see a publicity. This is a lovely meal. We make this. We make that. You can actually enter the restaurant. Order the food and taste. And then for yourself, tell whether they lied to you a man can taste and see that the lord is good can i tell you this many of you have struggled you have lived defeated lives anyone who does not have the immunity that his relationship with the lord jesus brings remains a perpetual victim of satan a perpetual victim of causes there is no hope for permanent deliverance for such an individual even if you administer the power of god the demons will live with speed because they know that there is no legal basis for the continuity of his freedom they will only wait for him and return back with joy the first ultimate and greatest deliverance the first ultimate and greatest healing the first ultimate and greatest prosperity is to come and receive this gift of himself god offers you himself i want to start a relationship with you here's what the bible says for god that same god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 popular scripture that he gave his one and only john 3 16 his only begotten son that whosoever including you whosoever not some preacher not some whosoever believeth in him there is a law that that person should not perish listen you may be here and you may be the first person to make this decision some of you have had dreams where god has told you you are the one who he will raise to tear down these horns that have attempted to destroy god over your family let tonight be your night we will celebrate miracles signs and wonders but i need you to make this decision immediately for jesus i'm going to make an altar call wherever you are seated here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium the galleries all the overflows down to the basement the overflow outside and those following online jesus christ is calling you listen you have a choice this is the beautiful thing about god he so loves you that he will not force you but can i tell you when love calls answer before power calls love calls power comes out of that love you are here and you are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity i sincerely want to win that war tonight and then for some of you the devil is telling you with all that has happened in your life all that you have done all that your family has done do you think god will accept you he can always give you a new beginning and then there are people who are saying apostle i remember giving my life to jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire i need to rededicate my life i'm going to count one to five listen to me do not be ashamed if i tell you to come and collect a check here you will not ask whether your hair is in the right place or your shoe is in the right place run like there's fire on the mountain as i count one to five come to jesus one All the overflows. Please run to Jesus. 
Don't look at anyone. Don't worry about who is looking at you. Two. Apostle, I need Jesus, but I'm ashamed of the person who I came with. Please leave that person and come to Jesus. This is a matter of your life and your destiny. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? Young and old, rich and poor, come to Jesus. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry His presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry His presence everywhere. You are my, your mind is so full of me. Hey, I'm just a, but You are the. Come to Jesus. What a harvest! Celebrate Jesus. Young and old together. Hear me. The more people yield and genuinely hand over to the governing authority of Jesus, the more a territory can be transformed. A territory does not just get transformed by giving people money to start skill acquisition. That is wonderful. But the problem of man is first a spiritual problem. The problem of man is not just a financial problem. The problem of man is not just an intellectual problem. The Bible, all religions as a matter of fact, it is in this one thing they agree, that the problem of man is rooted in the realm of the spirit. I salute every one of you for standing here. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Can I tell you this? Don't let the devil lie to you that Jesus cannot give you a new beginning. That's why he brought you here. I don't care how it has been. I don't care what you have done or not done. When you come to him, you see, rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come before the throne of grace. The Bible says to boldly come that we may obtain grace and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help even in time of need. The only thing I'll ask you to do is that when you stand here, mean every prayer from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Someday when we meet in heaven, we'll celebrate one another and say, Thank God you made this decision. If you're still joining them, please come quickly. In case you were thinking about it or you were still shy, join them, leave your seat and come very quickly. Don't worry, we'll not take time. When we pray, they'll just have your details and you'll return back and we'll be ready for the miracle service. Lift your right hand everywhere. Lift it high above your head. Let Jesus see that you are not joking. You mean business with him. Please say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I have heard your word. I I give upon myself. My ability to save myself is limited. Therefore, I hand over my life, my destiny to you. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you are the only Lord, Savior, and King. Therefore, I ask you to come into my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord, and be my King. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from today, I am a child of God. 
I go forward ever and backward never. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you now. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you, everybody who takes God seriously, it will take you seriously. Anyone who claims that he did not make this prayer, whether in the room or in the church, is not born again. If you are born again, you must have made this prayer at one time in your life. You don't naturally inherit salvation. You must make this. You don't wish salvation. You don't assume salvation. There is something called the assurance of salvation. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have brought them, oh God. Some of them are the ones you have anointed to be the deliverers of their family. Some of them have gone through all kinds of pain and disappointment. Lord, some of them have come here tonight as their last resort. They have come trusting you. They have come believing that only you can save. Some of them have tried all kinds of options. They have tried friends. They have tried all kinds of things. And it has failed them. But they have come to you. He says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the one true God. And Jesus, his son, they have declared, and according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken from your life. Yeah. Satan, take your hands of their lives and their destinies yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Take your hands of their lives and their destinies. From tonight, I declare that you go forward ever. And backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we can be called the children of God. I declare that you are sons and daughters of light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. All of you, I want you, there are a number of you counselors. Let's be very fast because we are going to start praying. I want you to just... Um, Go to my right, which is your left. You will see the counselors just waving the placard. Please follow them, cooperate with them. They will have your details just for a few minutes and you will return to your seat and join us as we pray. Let's celebrate them. All the overflows, the same thing. Zaria also is connecting. Zaria, make sure you are doing the same thing right now. Those who have made this prayer, listen please, if you made this prayer, perhaps you are in your home your office wherever just following from your device it doesn't matter you can use the email that you find online there and let us know that you just gave your heart to jesus christ and there'll be a few people who will just follow you and follow up on you let's celebrate them in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now here's what we'll do we'll give them a few minutes usually i make this altar call at the end of the service but i just felt strong in my spirit so what will happen please if we need a few people to join the council also we'll make it very fast let's make it very very fast so that they can come and join us because we need to pray fire is about to fall in this place and in the name of jesus god is in a hurry to change your life god is in a hurry to wipe your tears Hallelujah. Can we pray for a few minutes? Please rise up. Let's pray. You are here moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. We call you Waymaker, Miracle Walk, from this keep, light in the darkness. That is who you are. We call you there. We make miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. One more time. We 
I call you Miracle Walk from this keeper. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Please shout it after me. You can give them the mic. Help me, guys. Maybe two or three mics. Just give them. We can have it back. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every planting that is not of God in and around my life in and around my destiny be destroyed right now lift your voice and start praying are you praying every planting that is not of God in and around my life in and around my destiny be destroyed in the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray. He says, as for me and my house. Listen, whether your family members are here or not, you are going to stand in faith with them. Lord, as you are visiting me, wherever they are across this room, let the power of God reach them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house. As for me and my house, Hallelujah. 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 James chapter 4 and verse 3. Apostle James is schooling us in prayer. And he's saying that there is a possibility that men can ask and yet not receive. And he tells us why. Because ordinarily, everyone that asks should receive. But he's saying there exists a possibility that you can ask and still not receive. He says, because you ask amiss. You ask amiss. Amiss means out of patterns. And the pattern is give us this day. You can't say give me everything. You must mention what you desire. He said, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. What things soever ye desire, no assumptions, give us this day our daily bread. Are you ready to pray? 
you are going to open your mouth and mention everything or every area you need a visitation. No assumption. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice and pray. No assumption. No assumption. It is feeling in your body, declare it. It is a yoke that has cut upon your destiny, declare it. Hallelujah. 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 Now, here's how we do it here. Please listen. Whilst, whilst I begin to minister, for the sake of time, we have so many things to do this night. And I don't intend to keep us here beyond our normal time. So let me advise you up front, if you are yet to write your prayer request, we have a structure here that somewhere... Um, as we as the meeting is ongoing we'll collate all the requests even those online you can do well to just send in your prayer requests and we'll pray so if you're yet to do that please do that number two if a word comes now please hear this i need to tell us this it doesn't mean that if a prophetic word does not come carrying your name or carrying descriptions that directly relate to you it doesn't mean God is not speaking to you. You see, the way God works is that what He says to one, He says to all. So if, for instance, God is speaking over someone who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb, even though it is that particular case I may want to see here, but it doesn't mean that every other person cannot connect. Are we together now? If God is speaking concerning maybe captivity over a family, and then... If a prophetic word directly relates to you, please do well to save us time by coming. At least or indicate if you are not within this auditorium so that we know. These are some of the things that take away so much time. It's not a vigil, so we are limited. Are we together? There's a lot we have to do. We have to pray uh, for the sick. We have to minister deliverance and so on and so forth. But I'd like you to believe that this will be your miracle service. That this will be your miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I'm, I'm really sensing, and, and it's a very strange way, but I'm sensing that God wants to begin tonight by ministering to those who are in ministry. Ministers of the gospel. Those who are currently in ministry. And this is, what, this is what the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are people who have churches. There are some of you who have groups. And for some, they just came for greater levels of fire. You don't have to come out. I want to pray for you. And for some of you, you have the call of God upon your life, but you do not even know. And the Holy Ghost has been looking for you. Some of you, you are the ones destined to lift your family. And God has been speaking to you. This is the miracle service where He finally finds you. Hallelujah. 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 I pray right now for everyone 
who is in ministry and has not been producing the kind of results that the Bible says should follow. Or those who have the genuine call of God upon their lives. Please, I want you to bring those under the anointing as I pray this prayer. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I stretch my hands. May fire from heaven rest upon individuals. Let there be an ignition from the realm of the spirit. Young and old, inside and outside. I count three. One, two, three. Take that fire now. Take that fire now. Please bring them out very quickly. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus. Any church that is not growing. Any man of God who is struggling in ministry. I bring you the power of the Holy Ghost. Here at this miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Intercessory groups. All kinds of platforms. That don't seem to be working. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, your ministries to your families. There are altars that God is raising you to fight and tear down. I decree and declare, young and old, May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Ministry with evidence ministry with proof go and be a deliverer with fire go and be a deliverer it doesn't matter what yoke has sat upon your destiny and your families i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy ghost let there be that impartation of grace impartation of fire upon you impartation of power upon you Prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, Kebarakata, multiplied visions, prophetic ministries, particularly prophetic ministries, whatever has beclouded your vision, so that you don't see again, so that you don't hear again, receive fire upon your destiny fire upon your destiny the hearing ear the seeing eye the hearing ear the seeing eye in the name of jesus let there be an ignition by the power of the holy ghost the lord is speaking to me about prophetic ministries All of you who are out here, I decree and declare, according to the word of the Lord, step into the grace that has been apportioned for you. In the name of Jesus, step into that grace. Step into that grace right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, Alongside these people, there are a group of people I want to pray for. Please hear me. The Bible says, Saviors shall come out of Zion. Can I tell you, every family, every territory has men and women who have been selected. God wants to permeate families and bring deliverance. But there are individuals that God must find. Wherever they are here, if you are the one anointed and ordained, that God will raise you to wipe the tears of your family. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, at the bakatos, at the count of three, may God locate you. It's time for your family to arise. May God locate you. May God locate you. Young and old, saviors, arise by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Arise. 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 In the name of Jesus. It has nothing to do with gender. Male or female. If God has raised you. Whether you are a Gideon or Deborah. May the power of God come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come 
All of you in front, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let them go back to their seats quickly if they can. Let them go back to their seats. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. This is a miracle service. And the prayer I'm about to pray is a major prayer. Can I tell you this? Truly, truly, causes are real. Truly, yokes are real. Embargoes are real. Yes, the power of God is there to deliver. But it does not happen automatically. This is why you are here. I want you to pay attention. There are patterns. I will never stop praying this prayer. There are families under the sound of my voice. The same thing everybody faces in the family. If it's retrogression, it happens to everybody. If it's delay, it happens to everybody. Right now, I want to pray. At the count of three, whether you are inside or outside, I'd like you to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout, the power of the Holy Ghost will rest marvelously upon you. There are spirits that will not let destinies go free. Great people, some of you have traveled abroad and even returned back. Nothing is changing. My Bible says, Therefore, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the mention of that name, every family here, having any charm or any cause, or any ordinance, any fraternity with darkness, at the count of three, may the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon that family. Are you ready to shout at the count of three? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Right now, yokes, causes, I break causes, generational causes, patterns of darkness, maketos kotopeketepakata, be destroyed now be destroyed now be destroyed now bring them out be destroyed now in the name of jesus every spirit that will not let you go i decree and declare be delivered now in the matchless name of jesus please bring them out quickly help the ushers whether you are an usher or not please help them Hallelujah. We are still praying. We are still praying. The Lord is delivering many, many, many people right now. Every altar that is sitting on anybody's life. Yokes that will not let you go. Some of you have dreams. You go to bed in the night and hear this oppression comes. Right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. May that fire locate you wherever you are. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. There is a marvelous work that God is doing here. There are some of you, your oppressions have come in dreams. You go to bed in the night and all kinds of dreams. Going back to secondary schools, writing exams that don't finish, eating all kinds of things, fraternizing with dead spirits. Right now at the count of three, Makatos Kata, anyone's destiny under the siege of dreams, I declare at the count of three, shout Jesus again. One, two, Three. Let there be deliverance right now. Let there be deliverance right now. Let there be deliverance right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Be broken by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Mabel. Mabel. Like M-A-B-E-L. 
Is there someone like that? We have to hurry up because I want to pray for the sick. I'm hearing a name, Mabel. Mabel. You are wearing something like her tie. It's like lime or it's, I don't know what color it is. Is there someone like that? Mabel. What's your name? Where are you from? Is the mic working? Hallelujah. What's your name? Mabel. Huh? Mabel. You are Mabel. You are Mabel too. Who is from Cross River? I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Where in Cross River? Okay. I want to pray for you. Because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing fire. And the Lord wants to bring deliverance to your family. You believe that? I want to pray for you. There's an elderly woman now. I'm seeing the power of God come on that elderly woman. You are not young. I'm seeing the power of God come on you. The Lord is bringing salvation to your family. Your prayer has been your children in the name of Jesus. I don't know who that person is, but right now, I'm seeing power from heaven. Please bring the person here. My My sister, let me pray for you very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree over your life and over your family, everything that has a connection to ancestry, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let it be gone right now. Let it be gone right now. It will not follow you to your marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone right now. In the name of Jesus. And to you, please just help them make sure they don't injure themselves. To you, the other lady, Mabel, I stretch my hands in Jesus' name. Let there be a supernatural visitation for your family. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, let it give way right now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way right now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way right now. Bring for me the person who shouts now in this main auditorium, loud under the power of God. I just heard that sound in my spirit, a loud shout. This lady, there's a lady, that, that lady placing her hand on her neck. Please tap her for me. Lift your hands. I'm seeing fire coming on you. And the Lord is saying he's removing everything that stands as a barrier. I don't know what it is, but right now, let that fire come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That barrier is over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That embargo is lifted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is there someone with the name Jumai? I'm hearing a name Jumai. Jumai, this is what I'm hearing. Please, if that is not your name, please don't come out. Please, let's, everybody will be touched. Let's hurry up. Because I want, Jumai, who is that? Is there someone with such a name? Jumai, this is what I'm hearing. That, that's a northern, most likely. Please verify, make sure that you. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Hallelujah The power of God is coming on a businessman now I've seen that everything has failed this year you are into real estate or so this is what I'm real estate or something that has to do with land and construction but I'm seeing the power of God rest upon you now and the Lord is saying he's rewriting your story is rewriting your story. I don't know where that person is, but Karus Kati Lakatoshka Brendekate Embra Katoska Diba Lakata. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever, he, please help him. Wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, let this be the beginning of a new season. This man, come. You, this man, please come. God is about to change your life. Come. What do you do? 
What do you do? I'm into real estate. You are into real estate. Stand here. God is about to change your life, my friend. You believe in miracles? Believe, oh, please believe. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Oh, there is something called a prophetic advantage. And in the name of Jesus, by the privilege of God's grace, I stretch my hands and I declare, may the power of the Holy Spirit shift you to a new season. Shift you to a new season. Every limitation connected to what you do. God who located you, and I'm using him as a point of contact. If there is anyone here, that has been grounded in business that the only thing you see is shame and reproach may that embargo be broken now let it be broken now hallelujah why are they here okay i'm going to pray for you why is he here sir who brought him out here your name is jumai or oh, you just came out on your own it's okay i'll pray with you no problem it's all ah huh? Sir, look at me. Don't be ashamed. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Let it be over now. Keep him there. In the name of Jesus, every oppression and every yoke over your life, now, I'm seeing something that looks like I'm seeing a serpent all around this man. I declare right now. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. I just saw like light. Cabrande. Jesus Christ. God is visiting an ancient altar. This is what I'm seeing. Let it be broken right now. Now, the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. For every one of you who has come out here, I'm seeing the Lord bringing, I'm seeing this map I always see now, and I'm seeing Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. The power of God is visiting families from Nasarawa State. This is what I'm saying. I stretch my hands right now. The power of God is going to begin to come upon families. There are yokes connected to those regions. I declare right now, every altar. Let there be deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance right now. I break those yokes. I break those yokes in the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are here, madam, please lift your hands. Look at me. Shame and reproach. That's what I'm hearing. And reproach. Let it leave you now. Never to return to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, where are you coming from? Who is... Huh? Kogi State. Hmm. Did you come here alone? Yes, sir. You came here alone. Whatever connects you to the dead, dead, like dead people, I'm praying this, and this is not just for her. I'm seeing the number one seven, that everything that connects people to dead people, they come to you in your dreams when you are sleeping calling you they won't let you rest this is the spirit of death over families I'm, I'm going to pray for you mama but I'm using it as a point of contact please take what I'm saying seriously if there is anyone here or any family here appointed unto death right now I declare as I'm praying for our mother here may that that arrow that has been sent to that family let it return back to any devil that sent it let it return Let it return to every devil that sent it. Let it return to every devil that sent it. Let it return to every devil that sent it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Mama. Right now, I stretch my hands. Parusha Kogi State. 
let there be a miracle i separate you from the spirit of death in the name of jesus and all of you who are in front here for whatever reason you are out in jesus name may god give you a visitation may god give you a visitation by the power of the holy spirit i'm telling you i sense such a strong healing anointing i know that god wants to really really heal the sick we we'll hurry up so that we we'll start ministering to the sick but i want to pray please stop this woman for me this mama please don't be embarrassed man lift your hands i want to pray for you please stand up stand up the lord wants to remove reproach where are you coming from ma don't don't cry madam don't worry you are, you are here before the lord you see sometimes you may not know what kind of oppression people go through you see people laughing clapping hands lifting holy hands but there are people who are standing it's like they are standing on hot coals while they worship the lord hallelujah let me pray for you madam in the name of jesus i stretch my hands towards you you were going and the lord said i should stop you i declare that shame and reproach over your family and over your own life the spirit i want to pray here there is a spirit that makes people to be misunderstood where your evil becomes good your good becomes evil or there are people here it has happened to many people even in their workplace you do good things but people misinterpret what you are doing you know, when Bishop Oyedeko started ministry of Father and the Lord, this is what he said. That one time they were praying and the church was not growing. And he said, the Lord asked them, please help those under the anointing. It's a serious prayer I want to pray now. He said that the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he stood and he looked up and in a vision he saw a thick layer of darkness. And he said, this is the blindfolding demon that misunderstands what you are doing. And he says, now rebuke it. And he rebuked it. And it folded and went. And he produced a poster. He said, come and see. And that was it. I want to pray for someone here. The Bible says, do not let your good be evil spoken of. I pray for you. If there is any manipulation over your destiny that makes every good thing you do to be misunderstood, I break that spirit from off your life now. I cut that spirit away from your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I declare this is your, don't cry. This is your liberty right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a family, my God. Ah, you are the only child. Not like maybe male or female. You are the only child in that family. And I'm seeing the spirit of hardship. The Lord wants to bring deliverance to that family right now right now in the name of jesus i don't know who that is if 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 there is someone like that please let me know i want to pray for you you are you are the only child only child you are the only child i want to pray for you in the name of jesus christ Only child, I want to pray. Parasodosh kali brandege barus kadia pada, karakatosh kadia, magate barakatosh kate brandege deba. In the name of Jesus, please stretch your hands towards me. I decree and declare the embargo of hardship and suffering and everything that has kept your. Please make sure you are coming out for this situation. This situation, don't just come out at random. I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare. Honestly, the power of God is coming on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every connection with yokes of ancestry. Let it be broken now. 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 Every yoke sitting on your destiny that you will not move forward. I prophesy to you, advance in the name of Jesus. Advance in the name of Jesus. 
only child parandas kadi lakotosia advance in the name of jesus advance in the name of jesus advance in the name of jesus can you imagine only child everyone here I'm praying. Let them go. Release their destinies now. I'm praying for everybody, but there are two people particularly here in front. I'm praying this prayer for. Release their destinies right now. Release their destinies right now. Release their destinies right now. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus. Release their destinies right now. Everything holding you down tying you down be delivered in the name of jesus hallelujah let this be permanent in your life and i pray for you out of you that looks like you are the only one may nations arise 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 in the name of jesus Please return back to your seat. Let's pray for the sick now. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. look up. Many years ago, I'm about to pray for the sick. I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I had a vision. It was like it was locked down. And when I was there, I saw people who were very sick. People who, some of them were lying down, stretchers. And when I looked at it, a voice spoke to me from that vision. And it says, go and heal them all. And from that time till forever, God has not left himself a witness. Please hear me. Some of you are standing here for yourself. You are standing here for your loved ones. I want you to believe that God is a miracle worker. Within the few minutes we have, here's what we are going to do very quickly. Some of you already, this mass ministration has brought all kinds of healing for you. And even notable miracles. Everywhere, this is a miracle service. As I pray for you and rebuke that sickness, here's what I want you to do. Be bold to do what you could not do before. And the moment you find out that there is a miracle for you, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. I want you to quickly, quickly make your way, whether you are up the gallery, whether you are around. In fact, some of you, as you check yourself now, probably I administer to you and you found out that there is a miracle happening to you. I'd like you to come and stand either by my left here or by my right. And whilst we are doing that concurrently, please, I'd like you to pass your prayer request to the last person at the aisle, whether left or right. And then PR uh, um, or, or ushers, all the officials, please do well. Make sure that you collate them and let's have it very quickly. Let me just give you a minute to tidy up your prayer request and then you stand up and we'll pray for the sick. We'll pray for the sick. Very quickly. You can take the second half if you are yet to receive your uh, a form or if you are done, just pass it to the person. Do it believing. Do it believing that God is visiting you. Please pass it to the last person. Can you arise? I want to pray for the sick now. Please let's be upstanding. Thank you for your patience. We want to pray for the sick now. I believe in miracles. 
I have experienced the healing power of Jesus myself in my own life. Please lay your hands right now. Those who are watching from your homes, this is a time to receive. He is healer. Lay your hands everywhere you are trusting God for a miracle. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. If you are standing in for someone or with someone, go ahead and make that contact. Everywhere, outside, make sure you participate. Please believe God for healing of anything and everything. Now unto the one upon the throne We raise our sound We raise our sound For you are God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Father, you anointed us to be extensions of your healing power to the nations. And right now, I pray over your people. Many have come desiring to receive. Many have come desiring to be healed of all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and even with power. And it says he went about doing good and healing they that were oppressed. Right now I decree and declare, everyone here who is oppressed, I command the spirit that is back of any infirmity to be gone now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I declare be healed in Jesus name. My God, already I'm seeing the Lord heal someone's, someone's limbs. I don't know if you're on a wheelchair or you're on crutches, but a miracle is happening right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. I decree and declare, pain on the head, severe migraines, the Lord is healing right now. Pain around the joint areas, all around the arm in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle right now now hear me every cancer cancer or any kind of cancerous growth we curse you now in the name of Jesus HIV AIDS be healed in the name of Jesus everyone who cannot see in the name of Jesus partial or total blindness I command that eyes to open now in Jesus name anyone who cannot walk I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let life and strength come upon your limbs now in Jesus name there are many people connected from several hospitals I decree and declare in the name of Jesus let the power of God from here through the airwaves let it come upon you and bring you life heart palpitations be healed in the name of Jesus growths around the body anywhere around the body we command you to give way right now in Jesus name there's someone you are having severe pain you've gone to the hospital it's like they said something is happening to your I don't know if it's your nerves or just the bones around your spine right now I'm declaring to you let the healing power of Jesus touch you now someone you have like a skin infection I'm seeing several things are happening around your skin it's not necessarily lack of hygiene is that something has happened I don't know some demonic thing I declare let there be healing for you right now the Lord is showing me people just the throat area it looks like you swallowed something but it has refused to pass down and it's terribly discomforting the power of God is touching you right now every pain around the chest area 
be healed right now. There's, there's a lady, the power of God is touching a lady. You have a lump, in fact, multiple lumps on the left side of your breast. But as I'm praying for you, the power of God is touching you right now. That devil leaves your body forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha, huh. this is interesting. The Lord is healing a man of impotency. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let there be supernatural healing for you right now. Let there be supernatural healing for you right now. Regardless the medical report, we change it now. In the name of Jesus. Someone's left ear. Someone's left ear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is speaking to me that there is someone, you are having the early stages of prostrate, prostrate cancer. You are a man. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, by the power of the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. Movement around the body. I'm seeing someone having movement. Sometimes you literally feel like something is moving around your body. Help them please. Help her. I command that devil to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What is that condition where you cannot sleep? In the name of Jesus Christ. Apnea. Sleep apnea. I'm seeing at least three people having that condition, just rolling, rolling on the bed, but never getting to sleep. You are unable to sleep, even if it's for an hour. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, whether in this auditorium or outside, I declare, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Someone just around your wrist, the Lord is bringing a miracle for you. I don't know if it's that you... Was it a, 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 some kind of injury or whatever it is? I want you to check it right now. The power of the Holy Spirit is stepping upon you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone who has like malaria or typhoid. You've treated it again and again and it has refused to go. In fact, you came here feeling so sick. Right now, I'm praying for you. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, any pain around the bone region, whether neck, hand, the, the waist area, I declare, may the power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone, you are having a problem with your nostrils. It's like you don't smell completely or it's that you don't smell well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying for you. May the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you now. There's someone's child here. I'm seeing like, like, it looks like bipolar, you know, acting as like madness. Sometimes a person just begins to talk. I don't know who that person is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be healing for that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now by the power of the Holy Spirit and any condition whether I mention it or not in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now the Lord is showing me I'm seeing someone your child has autism autism in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, may the anointing rest upon that child right now. Let there be a supernatural miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing like a picture of a woman's womb. And instead of seeing a child there, I'm seeing like a big mass. I'm not a doctor, just resting there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care what is the name of what is there. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, we command that devil to go out of that womb now. We command that devil to leave that womb now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Therefore be healed from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Someone, your uncle, your uncle, I don't know, it's like you had a problem with your uncle. As I'm praying, check it now. You will see that that devil has gone. The pain is gone completely. Now, please check yourself. You find out there is a miracle I want you to run right now. Miracles are happening everywhere. Please, if they are coming to testify, allow them whether they are coming from outside. Are you celebrating? Make your way to the front right now. The power of God is touching people. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A miracle is happening there. Are you celebrating what God is doing? Huh. Check yourself. Don't sit back. The moment you find out Mama has been healed, something has happened to Mama. Are you celebrating Jesus? More people are coming. The Lord is touching people. Please check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. There's, there's someone I was, I saw this when I was praying. I'm still seeing it. I don't know if it's that you could not use your left leg. Um, it's like, I don't know if it's that you cannot walk well or you could not walk completely. But I'm seeing the Lord heal that person wherever you are. Check yourself. If you are seated or you're on a crutch, stand up and trust God for healing. Stand up. Check yourself right now. Koinonia, are you celebrating what Jesus is doing? Hallelujah. We are going to take, please sit down for a few minutes. We will take a few, a few testimonies right now. Very quickly to the glory of the name of the Lord. Please let me know when you are ready so that we will hurry up. God is healing people. Supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man, what is that on your neck? It's a collar. Huh? You don't, you, your neck does not, you, you feel pain. Huh? Or you can't move your neck. Huh? It grab it. Let a doctor help us explain this, or I don't know what it is. Okay, my neck gravitates to the left. When, Gra I, try, when I try to move it to the right, goes back to the left. It doesn't move. So it goes back to the left. When oh, when you move, the neck moves back. Yeah, moves Dave, what is that? Yes, it's called torticolis. Yes, it's called torticolis. It's the spasm of the neck. It's, no matter what he does, it goes back to um, the intended position. Oh, yes. it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. Can I pray for you? Place your hand there. Carry your collar. Come with it. Someone help him. Where are you coming from, sir? Where are you coming from? From Abuja? Yeah. Place your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what this is called, but I know it is demonic. In the name of Jesus, right now, I stretch my hands. Let there be a miracle for you. You see, something is happening to you. I'm seeing like fire just rest upon you. I wouldn't have called you except that I sensed that a miracle was happening to you. I cursed that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how long it has been, but right now I declare, let there be a supernatural miracle over your neck. In the name of Jesus. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Just place your hand there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look at this. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it there. Turn. Keep it there. Look at this. Hallelujah. 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 Sir, stand up.
Do it again. Move left. Don't be afraid. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, please look at me. I want you to believe in miracles. Don't let the devil make you think you are just acting. This is why not acting movies here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that what has happened to you now, it remains permanent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seat rejoicing. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So, please come. Very quickly, so, yes. Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge for, you know, people with problems with their wrists. With, with their wrists. Yes. So, this four people we're having here. Check, check yourself. Let's see it. Any pain? How long has it been for you? How, what of you? Two months. Four years plus. Four years plus. Check it now. Any pain? It's completely gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it remains permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. Permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, sir. So you also gave a word of knowledge regarding people with pains in their neck, their back, and... And the way. How long? Okay. It's been four years because I saw and it comes once in a while. I even forgot that the pain was there. I was standing in the gap for my family. Okay. And I began to feel heat sensation when you declared the pain. I began to feel the heat. So I, 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 I can't. Before now, I can't bend. Bend now. Bend now. Any pain. Come on, Koinonia. Any pain. In the name of Jesus, I declare it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. So, everyone here have one or, you know, two different situations of pain in their body. Okay, please pain. All of you forward. here. Please come forward. Just bring them forward here. Where is... Okay, I will listen to all, but I want to listen to that mama's testimony. That, that, that our mother. I want to know what happened to her. In the name of Jesus, all of you here, please lift your hands. Every pain whether around your joint wherever it is the miracle that has happened to you the power of god is coming on one of you i just saw light right now on one of you in the name of jesus christ let it be the end of it because yours is not just pain this is witchcraft i command that devil to go never to return again in the name of jesus i bless you you are healed you are healed forever in jesus name yes please Apostle, Mama has had challenge with her knee for over four years. She could not fold Your knee, let her talk. Yes. She couldn't fold for the past four years. She went to the hospital. Before, before I can't fold my legs. Please help us with the mic. Today, I can fold it. No you can't fold your legs. Before. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Any pain. No, Look no. at this. Completely. For the past four years, sir. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Go ahead. Very quickly. Movements in her body for the past five years. He says something snakey moves around. So when you mentioned the case, she touched her stomach and her chest. Then she fell under the anointing and now she's sound and whole. Where are you from? Lagos. Lagos. State of origin? Ogun State. In the name of Jesus, that devil leaves you now, never to return to you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, this please. This boy has had kidney issues for years, so he couldn't breathe very well. When you mentioned the case... He fell under the anointing and now he, he couldn't can breathe. breathe very well. Now he can My breathe. friend, breathe. Breathe in. <laughs> Look how determined he is. Breathe in and out. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never, never return to you again yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Spinal pain for the past two years. He said he couldn't turn his neck and he could not stand for long. But the power of God came upon him. Now the pain is gone. You, you, what do you mean you couldn't? I was always having discomfort. I can't find a pop Do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't do this before. Lift your hands. Stretch like you are stretching. Any pain. It's gone completely. In Jesus' name we declare it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. We are still on. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, this is God's miracle upon the two mamas we have here. Hallelujah. Speak in house, any in language house, you can go ahead. Speak in it. When I cover Yadi, the Ella Damuna Shakara, there I can. Damon said the Kaya Shago Banaya, say, say, I shago. 
Me faru yanzu ama. Yanzu na jin shi soki yanzu. Ki gudu. Run. Oh, look at this. She's complaining that she for a long time she couldn't sell because of a pain on her limb and now it's gone completely. It will never return to you, mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and excel and I pray in addition to this may God prosper you. In Jesus name I pray. Yes, please. Let's celebrate God for her. Similarly, Mama also has okay. been having this problem for more than a year. Praise the Lord. This leg, since uh, the COVID-19 lockdown, around March, I've been having these pains. I, can, I don't go out. I have it. If my husband is not going to church, I may not go to church because I cannot climb bike. But you can't climb bike? No, I can't climb bike. I see my leg now. Yes. Come on, are you celebrating what Jesus has done? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never, never return to you, Mama. You are healed now, you are healed forever. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate her. Yes, please. Apostle, a very interesting case. She has a very strange condition. Well, I'm not a medical person, so I will not attempt to explain. (laughs) But, okay, so we have a medical person here, and I think... Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord, sir. She just told me now that she used to have conjection in her chest. She has to have conjection in her chest. So okay. she's able to breathe very well. Okay. Her lungs will be congested and all that. Then her BP is always high. So her blood pressure is always high. Yes. Okay. To so confirm that, I asked her, can I go and bring our BP apparatus to confirm if it has actually gone down? She said yes. So I went to bring it. So I had checked the BP and it has gone up. I would have shown the camera. It was 129 to what we used to read 150, 100 and above before. Wow. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare, let there be a miracle for you right now. Your BP returns back to normal in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes, please. So, Apostle, we have a very strange miracle here. Hmm. Um, so, please, my God. Praise the Lord. My name is Remy Akinsu, a politician. Oh. Um, so, with the last um, miracle here. Miracle service. I came. Then I found out that I was healed. I, was, I didn't. I didn't even think about. It. I could walk now. My son was trying to video my everything. He was surprised. This is miracle service because he doesn't believe in all this. Well, Com- I went from South Africa. I said yes, it is. But the third day after the healing, I started having that feeling again. Then I said, what, what did I? So I called my son in South Africa. who said, Mommy, your house must still have something. That is not uh, of God. Hmm. So maybe he's in class or something. But this today, today, yes. I came, I was telling the, my neighbor who sat with me, I said, I'm not sure. I had to walk out, walk about, and try and stretch my body. And then make sure that I'm not. And, and right now, what happened to you, Mama? I feel stronger. Hmm. Just a minute, Apostle, maybe just to jump in here. She actually had what they call a motor skill disorder. Her body begins to tremble. So, in fact, for her, that was a shock. So, her body shakes, and um, I think... Like, like Parkinson's? Yes. Or? yes. So, um, I feel okay. Wow. But I can dance for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope I'm, I'm not mistaken. The one-time governorship governorship aspirant in Lagos. Oh, I'm sorry. My God. Truly, oh, she stopped shaking. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry we didn't recognize to honor you. May God bless you, ma. And even in politics, may God take you to the heights you desire. We declare that this devil of shaking all around your body as it has stopped now, it stops forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's celebrate her. Okay. Yes. Apostle, Mama has had lump in her abdomen for two years. Let us speak. Now, the one strange thing about this is that the lump sucks her blood. So every time they give her blood, the, the lump will suck. Please the let us speak. Uh, for the last, since 2018. 
Is, is this I the best of the sound? Please help us. Since 2018, I was losing weight and I went to my doctor. They found out that my blood level was low and my stomach was hurting. There was a big lump and it always hurt me. So when they give me blood, the blood will high and then the following day it will go back down. So, and then I had heart problem and then I was operated on my lungs because my blood was so low. So, when I determined that I must come here. And that's why I wore two pieces. So that I said, when they were talking about this, I would put my hand on my stomach. And as I put my hand on my stomach, on this side, and as the apostle was praying, the Holy Spirit fell on me. And I felt the heat all over me. And now, the pain is gone. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it will never return to you again. And the Lord is taking away the spirit of death completely from your family. Where is your husband? He passed away in 2017. Where is your son? He passed away. I have my oldest son passed away in 2011. Every spirit that kills the men in your life, I use as a point of contact to pray. Whatever will make people suffer and when it's time for them to stay, they die. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit now. And, and, my, and my youngest son passed in 2013. How many sons do you have left? One. Out of? Out of three sons. The oldest and the youngest son. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't worry. That one son we have, may God make him equal to ten sons together. That one son you have. We are standing as a family here to pray for you. That in the name of Jesus, you may not seem to have a husband. And all the sons that should take care of you in old age may have gone. But if the son is here or maybe he's following online, we are praying for you. May God give you the strength of ten sons. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Let's celebrate very quickly. Give word of knowledge of love in the brain. Ten years long in the brain. Ten, ten years. Ten years done. Disappeared. Confirmed by the medical. Party. Please let her talk. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. It's on my left wrist. I've, I've had it counting. I think either ten years or more. Okay. I've, I've run the checks on it. They found in the hospital, but. You mentioned it, and shortly afterwards, I, I was able to put my hands in my clothes, and I don't... Completely, it's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from? Here in Abuja. I live in Abuja. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it will never return to you again, madam. It will never return to you again. In Jesus' name. Uh, let's see how many... Yes, sir. Let's see how many we can take so, more. So, Apostle, we need to hear this. Um, we need to get this one. So, sir, so I can't explain the, there was the name, the medical terminology. You know, these one. medical people, they frustrate us sometimes. You just stand and they call something that looks like um, a whole verse. Okay, Apostle, the mother has lumbar spondylosis. Oh, I know that one. That yes. demonic thing that stops people from, I know yes. that one. For the past five years. So they've been trusting God and believing God for a miracle. Though the mother uses a lumbar corset. So okay. in the course of the service, he called them and asked them to connect in faith. And now the mother can do what she could not do. Ah. No more corset. From where? She where is your say, mother now? She's at home. She's at home. She, in Abuja yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Wherever she is, if she's fallen, Mama, we salute you, we congratulate you. In the name of Jesus, that miracle remains permanent. Yes. Lumbar spondylosis, in Jesus' name, you leave Mama and we declare she's healed now and healed forever. And f you for standing, what are you trusting God for? No, I didn't say kneel down. Please stand up, our time is going. My friend, what are you trusting God for? Think before you talk, don't just speak. I'm... Yeah, don't be afraid. 
um, I, 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 I heard this. God have told me that I'm into. I'm called into ministry. Um, what I want is to have double portion of your anointing. Sir. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. You be pull a sit down. Our time is going. Listen. He's a very wise person, but. But let me, let me, let me, you think I'm going to just impart and t- go and read your Bible. You people think anointing is, mm-mm. God doesn't work like that. You are, you are, listen, my friend, don't worry. God is going to, it is, it is my joy that God will raise multiples of this. You get the point. But there is a process in the spirit, huh? But I want to pray for you. What do you do now? I mean, told me, you said, I was doing business before, but if I start explaining it, it is Listen, I want you to take care of that your mother first. Eh? It's when you can eat that you have the strength to even do what you are doing. So I want to pray for you. Stretch your hands. In the name of Jesus. Believe what I'm saying. Father, empower this, my friend. That one day you will come and stand here. May God use relationships to change your life. In the name of Jesus. May God raise a helper to just hold your hand and help you. I release this grace upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. All right. So, okay. Okay, so, Apostle, you spoke about the condition of malaria. and Hold on, actually, please. Hold on, please. So, she was actually placed on drip right on this ground. Oh, you were placed on drip here by the medical team? Yes, sir. What happened to you? Malaria. And they, they placed you on drip yes. while service was going on. And an object was, had been moving. Around her body for how long? You see, all these objects that. See, throughout this week, one week ago. And, and right now, what happened to you? I'm okay. They removed the drip. Yes. <laughs> it's good to have medical people who have faith. Check yourself. Both of you, are you sisters? I've been having migraine for over 10 years. So after the prayers, it comes back and malaria. So, after the prayers, you mentioned the case. I was laying hands on my head. So, I didn't want to come out because it has happened for over 10 years. So, I went into the restroom because once I perceive anything that has fragrance, it sparks it off. So, but as I went in there, I couldn't even perceive anything. That was how I knew that I'm completely healed. You see, that's how you know it's a demonic thing. For both of you, in Jesus' name, let there be supernatural miracles for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's, let's see if we can Sir, take two or three very more. Striking testimony. Yes, you go gave ahead. Word of knowledge of HIV. HIV? Yes, she has gone to take the test now from the medical team. And, she's and it's, it's negative. Negative. 12 years. 12 years. She's Hallelujah. Listen, let, let, let me tell you this. We have, we have very professional medical people. So don't you think that it's just, we have very, some of our people work in some of the, 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 the renowned institutions in this city. So if I tell you that someone was checked, we are people of integrity. We will not come and embarrass ourselves before the world. Twelve years. Ma- how many years? Twelve years. You prayed with me September 14th. I came to see you with my husband after suffer, suffering from a lot of shame and reproach. Shame and reproach? Yes. And I thank God today. I and what happened now? It came out. This is the doctor. Yes, go ahead. I ran the test three times and it all came out negative. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne. We raise a sound, we raise a sound, for He's God and God alone, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can I tell you this? HIV is a wicked and demonic whatever. And let me tell you, don't you think everyone who gets HIV got it from maybe living a wayward life? I have prayed for whole families where someone came in the dream, true story, with a syringe. 
and injected them physic in the dream and they woke up physically with hiv so not everybody you see with hiv don't stigmatize anyone you see that now because there are people who have this thing for various reasons but this is why god puts a miracle service imagine the shame and reproach three times three times father ma madam don't cry huh? in the name of jesus christ everything you have lost as a result of this reproach not only has god healed you but we declare a restoration opportunities and all kinds of relationships you have lost let there be restoration right now in jesus name yes please she has had severe heart issues in fact her, her brother is a medical doctor because of how serious the case was heart the, issue heart issues she, she weakness all around her body she couldn't climb stairs but the power of god came upon her and she can raise up her hand very well G all this she could not do before give when her the I mic came during the prayer i couldn't even raise this paper up like i had to be bringing raise it up let the devil see it come my dear run come and climb up hallelujah eh. hallelujah eh. hallelujah eh. heart condition couldn't even raise that thing up you see how bad the devil is if you cannot raise your hand up the same way he brings down people's hands he can bring down people's finances he can bring down people's honor everything that has been brought down that you could not raise up kaparus katebalakata in the name of jesus here at this miracle service if god could raise a hand back may he raise your finances back may he raise your honor back may he raise your wisdom back may he raise your fire back in the name of jesus christ yes please quickly you mentioned cases of skin rashes hitches the part of the has had it since 2009 what is that skin hitches rashes on the skin rashes yes okay the no, 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 please, we don't have time for the text. Just straight the to power the power of God came upon him and yes. he sound now. Completely. Completely. The same thing with her. The same thing with you. Yes, sir. How long? What happened to you? I don't know. The, the, the skin rashes just came since six months now. I've been taking medications, nothing. And, and you, now? You just mentioned I'm not feeling any. You're rashes. not feeling the itch yes. again. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, just quickly. ago i had a miscarriage and i lost so much blood and as a result of that i've been having a numbing on my oh dear. left leg so coming into this place tonight i felt the power of god and you mentioned my case you said somebody came with a left knee um problem three weeks ago three weeks ago so immediately i felt perfectly okay i can do everything do you have now. children no how long have you been married Last year, do you believe in miracles yes, sir. place your hand on your stomach father in the name of jesus look at me you believe in jesus i stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names i command that devil i'm seeing let her go right now in the name of jesus christ out of her now it's not miscarriage anything these are demons from the pit of hell be delivered right now let me pray for everyone here trusting god for the fruit of the womb in the name of jesus whether for you or your loved ones i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead return with miracle children return with miracle children return with miracle children my dear tell her to write it god will give her a baby boy if her husband is here write it god bless you in the name of jesus remember not the former things nor consider the things of old for the lord is doing a new thing for you yes sir so a person has a very strange condition when he sits under the ac no matter how low it is he begins to find difficulty breathing and it actually affects him so he has a very severe headache just from that experience. once you sit under ac once you sit under the ac so headache or qatar 
Man of God, I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. And my name is Emmanuel. Um, yes, just just the condition. Yes. Sorry, because so, of time. So just for time's yes. sake, Apostle. So the moment you prayed for healing for people with migraines and all, just a miracle for him. Instantly. For nine uh, years. Nine instantly. years. For nine years. You can't sit under AC. I can't sit under AC. And any time I go out with my governor to work with him, I do cover my nose. And uh, immediately I, I come in today for the miracle service. And I discover that I am supposed to remove my face mask. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I pray for you. It is permanent. It never returns to you again. In Jesus' name. Please, let's have two here. And then maybe, my God, there are so many testimonies. Do you know what? Let me tell you this. If you are unable to testify today, don't close down your testimony. We need to hear what Jesus is doing. The medical team, you can get it, we can collate it, and then by next week we can invite you to come and let the house know what Jesus is doing. It's not a good thing to be silent over profitable testimonies. They help strengthen the body. More than just showing that the man of God is powerful. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Just one, two, or three striking ones, and then we'll have... Yes, sir. So, sir, these are sportsmen, and it will be interesting to actually hear what they have to say about their condition. Yes, sir. Straight to the point. Yes, I have serious problem with my left leg. I'm in Abuja presently because the physiotherapist is taking care of the leg for like a month, my left leg. I what do you do? I play football. Oh, you're a footballer? Yes. I, I was playing for Kano Pillars before I had the injury, and then I left for two years. So... I can't really work well. I can't really play well. I've been struggling with it. I've done all X-ray, yes. the scan, and the rest. And then during the anointing, when he mentioned the left leg, somebody cannot really do stuff. And there's yes. always pains there. So I didn't want to. I had to go to the bedroom and check. And then when I came back, my friend is sitting there. I said, Maduka, my leg, I can't feel the pain again. He said, I Check it now. Me. Check it. Completely. You were playing for Kano Pillars before. Yes, sir. Can I pray? You really want to play football professionally? Let me pray for you. Look at me. My friend, believe in the power of God. You will be surprised. There is a grace that can shift people. I stretch my hands. What's your name? Shama. Shama. Tanzi. Don't rise and run away from God. Though, because let me just give you a disclaimer. Most people... They use God. When they get there, they just dump him and enjoy. God is raising people who love him. But I stand by the God of heaven. See, there is a kingmaker anointing. Kingmakers never become kings themselves. But they can enthrone kings and dethrone kings. I stretch my hands now. And I pray for you. My friend, carry this grace. Go to the field. I pray that God will use you marvelously. You will be a source of pride to your family. Let this be the beginning of great days in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. So, oh. similar condition, but he popped his knee playing basketball. Footballer too? No, I was playing basketball a few, mix, um, few months back. So I popped my left knee. Okay. I couldn't walk. I was with a limb. And now? And now, as soon as you... Check yourself. Jump. Check yourself. <laughs> Check yourself. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent and the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Let's have a last one from this our little one. So, Apostle, this is interesting. He couldn't fold his legs, like bend his legs, but now... How old, how old are you, my friend? Eleven. Eleven? You couldn't fold your leg. What happened? I was playing ball. You were born that way? Playing, no, he okay, was playing ball. Okay, go ahead. Fold it now. Any pain? Any pain? Completely gone. Supernatural miracle. May God raise you to become a mighty vessel in his hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please, Apostle, very quickly. Three years partial deafness in the left ear. Gone. She couldn't hear properly with it. Your but left now, ear? Yes, How long? Over three years now. Can you imagine this? Yes, but now I can hear perfectly. Very clearly? Yes, very clearly, sir. May you hear the voice of your destiny helper. <laughs> that ear that has opened, whether spiritually I use... Because there is physical deafness, there is financial deafness, there is destiny deafness. I'm praying for you. The same way God opened her ears, in the name of Jesus Christ, in every realm of life where your ears cannot hear, let it be open right now in Jesus' name. You will not hear the voice of your enemy. As that ear is open, you will hear the voice of your helpers. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, please. Partial blindness. Her right eye. She couldn't see with it properly. So the doctor confirmed it. They asked her to close the left eye and then ask her to see. And How long? She can see. Madam? Three months and now, sir. And you, you could not see with which, which of them? The right eye. Close the one you could not see with. Close the one you could see with. No, she's closing two of them. Close. How, how do I tell her now? Yes. Madam, Sir. walk. Walk to the camera. Walk to the camera. Just follow the camera. Follow the camera. Look at what God is doing. Ah, look at this. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. That's all right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare. You can, you can clearly see. When you see her eyes, you can see that this is almost as if she's completely blind. In Jesus' name, we correct this situation now. In Jesus' name. Please let that be the last for now so oh, that we can. Asians, you mentioned pelvic girdle pain. Are you together with the boy? Okay, so let's, let's just do it with the boy once and for all. And that will be it. Yes, please. The pelvic girdle pain has gone now. Okay, what happened to you, Mama? I had a pelvic girdle pain. And for a very long time, but very, very lately, it's been very painful. So during the praise worship, I danced as if I, as I never danced before. So uh, yes. after I felt... The pain was gone. Completely. Completely, but when pressing it, you will I still feel a bit of pain, pain, yes. But when the word of knowledge came, the pain was gone. Completely. Completely. Check it now. Any pain. Any pain. Secondly, there was something like a phlegm, like cough on my throat. Okay. I tried so many times to cough it out. But it let, let him testify with the boy. After, yes. But just now, it's gone. it's gone. It will never return to you again, Mama. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. If, if you're yet to confirm it, that's all right. We'll pray. You mentioned the case of bipolar. So it just came to present. Oh, the in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over the little boy. How old is he? Nine years. Who is he? Nine years. Nine. Yes, How old? Nine years. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over the little one. Amen. Bipolar. Amen. Be completely healed right now. Amen. Okay, two of them. In Jesus' name, I lay my hands on both of them. Oh, you can see this one is not bipolar. Now, this looks like autism. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing for both of them. You know, sometimes these conditions can be so challenging. You can't imagine how it is. In Jesus' name, let there be a miracle for them. And I, I pray for all of you. We apologize that we didn't have the time. But I pray that your miracles remain permanent. In Jesus' name. And for all those who have received their miracles at home, I decree and declare supernatural healing for you. In Jesus' name. And it remains permanent. Can you stretch your hands here for a moment? We're about rounding up. If you can stand, please. This is the final stage. Apologies, it's a miracle service and sometimes it will stretch us a bit. Just stretch your hands in one minute as we decree and declare. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. This, for me, is one of the major parts of this meeting because this is the most accurate representation of people's desires. We see in part, we prophesy in part. doesn't matter who is healed. Sometimes you just cannot minister enough. But I want you to stretch your hands right now and begin to declare over these requests we decree and we declare online offline we declare by the spirit of the living god father we decree and declare let there be miracles turn everyone's mourning to dancing sorrow to joy in the name of jesus christ every garment of shame for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord 
that he might be glorified. I decree and declare right now over every request here. I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead that every request here is turned for a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying if there is any death sentence here represented in the name of Jesus we avert it right now. Embarrassing financial conditions. We turn that shame and that reproach to honor in Jesus name. I decree and declare that every victory that Satan may seem to be having over every life we decree the same way Jesus rose up from the dead. In the name of Jesus, everything that looks dead, it must come back to life. And as I would always declare, I decree upon these requests that these Egyptians you see today, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, may you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me speak over your life. I truly believe in the power of prophecy. Every financial door, I just sense in my heart to pray. If you don't believe it, don't worry. Wait for what you believe that I'm talking about, then you receive. But I pray right now, every financial door that has been closed over everyone here, in the name of Jesus, causing all kinds of constraints and inconveniences, in the name of Jesus, let that door be open now. <laughs> Financial doors be open now. <laughs> Financial doors be open now. For individuals, for institutions, for families. Financial doors be open now. So that you will have supplies that will give you the opportunity to focus on your work with God and your destiny. Again, I pray that those doors be opened now. <laughs> Hear me? Anyone here who is in any kind of debt, personal debt, corporate debt, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the power that raised Christ up from the dead, come out of that situation now. Everyone who has promised to help you and has forgotten about you in the name of Jesus right now here at this miracle service I decree and declare let the book of remembrance be open concerning you Let the book of remembrance be open concerning you Hallelujah There is a garment of favor that an individual can wear and you can wear and move and everything around you will attest to the fact that you carry that garment every garment of shame and reproach prophetically i remove it from you right now and i decree and declare for your shame may god grant you access to the garment of favor favor in the city favor in the country favor in the morning favor in the afternoon favor in the night in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please help them. I want to pray. If there is any addiction. That the devil is using to trap you. Because many people's finances go because of all kinds of addiction. I decree and declare right now. Any addiction that is trapping your life. Trapping your destiny. Here at this miracle service. The power of that addiction over your life. Let it be broken now. 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 We believe in winning families. Any family here that is under siege, troubles every day, joblessness, weakness, death, in the name that is above all names, I speak over every family here represented. Step into a new season of favor. I pray for your spiritual life. Because you see, no matter what else works in your life, 
if your prayer life, your word life, your passion for God and for the things of God, if it goes down, everything went down. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus. For someone's prayer life here that is yet to catch fire, I release my faith with you from tonight. Spiritual laziness that will not allow you pray, that will not allow you fast, that will not allow you study scripture. In the name of Jesus, we declare the spirit that is behind it, let it live your life now. I declare fresh fire over your spirit man. Fire for prayer, fire for word study, fire for fellowship, in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. We are stepping into October. I want to speak over your life. Everything you saw at the beginning of this year that your hands have not yet handled. Between the remaining days, now and the end of September, I decree and declare, you will enter October with that expectation in your hand. You will enter October with that expectation in your hand.